Hello, and welcome to the wreckage of Mithranor. My name is Chris, and I'll be your dungeon master tonight, and I use they, them pronouns. We're thrilled to be streaming at twitch.tv slash RollTogetherRPG. Well, how to describe the wreckage of Mithranor? It's a love letter to computer RPGs of my childhood, including uh, the Baldur's Gate series, the Pool of Radiance series, Neverwinter Nights, um, taking a specific location from Pool of Radiance, and then putting a modern spin on it. So um, the ancient elven city of Mithranor has been lost to time many a time, and is so once again. And a group of unlikely heroes in this case will be heading there to try and uncover more secrets. I hope you enjoy the adventure. For those who are new to Dungeons & Dragons, everyone here is playing a fantasy character in a fantasy universe. They all have their own unique character sheets in front of them, which tell them who they are, what they can do, their deepest, darkest secrets, and what dice to roll. They'll mostly be rolling a 20-sided dice, and you should be seeing a little number ticker up here in the corner when they do. Uh, 20s are good, 1s are bad, everything in between is on a scale, so feel free to boo and or cheer depending on what's happening in the story. And while they play their characters, I, the Dungeon Master, will play literally everything else. So anyone they encounter, any monsters they have to fight, any uh, weather patterns, story beats, anything else, that's all me. So um, you'll see me playing a huge number of people alongside them. Now, I'm very excited to introduce you to the cast of The Wreckage of Mithranor, so without ado, here they are. Hi, I'm Nat, I use she, her pronouns, and I'm playing Ildrathne Elendor, who uses she, they pronouns. Eldrathni is uh, an elf, definitely an elf, definitely not a dampier at all. No, mostly elf. Um, and also a cleric and a little bit of paladin and is currently traveling with a very, very ancient elf on a mission to go to the renowned city of Mithranor. Hi, I am Rebecca. I use she, her pronouns. I am playing Ava, who also uses she, her pronouns. Ava is an Azamar, a warlock of the undead. She currently has uh, a dead patron, stolen powers, a massive vendetta with her god, and the Wand of Orcus sending demons after her, so that's all fine. Uh, some people say that she's evil, and I've no idea why. She just has a lot going on. Hi there, I'm Nate. I uh, I use EM pronouns and I get played by G, uh, who also uses EM pronouns. And uh, well, I'm I started off as a wizard, right? And then I hung about with some druids for a long time. And then I hung, hang on, wait, no, that was when I became an artist versus sort of for a bit, more like an apprentice. But then I didn't really finish my training. Uh, and well, most recently I made a warlock pact. And well, I've been in some bands and some stuff for, for a while as well. So I suppose you could say I'm kind of like, a, I like getting into a lot of different stuff. Hey, I'm Niall. I play Anson Rain. Uh, both of us use he, him pronouns. Uh, Anson is a divination wizard and a little bit of fader thrown in there. Um, yeah. Once found out that he is um, a descendant of, <laughs> of an ancient Netherese wizard, uh, undead mummy, and uh, is, well, not a descendant, but a clone, and is currently struggling with that whilst, uh, whilst you know, being a little bit obsessed with magic and mythlars. Hi, I'm Evie, I use she, her pronouns, and I'm playing Ephemera, who also uses she, her pronouns. Um, Ephemera is a reborn druid of spores, um, and being reborn it was killed, sacrificed to Orcus at some point in the past, and through a wacky series of events is now traveling with her good pal Ava, totally a, not a terrifying angel person, with a wand of Orcus being chased by demons. Life decisions have been made, don't know if they're good. And there are all of our lovely players. Before we dive too deep into the story, a couple more AOB to go through. First, a word from our sponsors. We are delighted to be sponsored by HeroForge. HeroForge offers fully customizable tabletop minis with dozens of fantasy species and thousands of parts to choose from. You can see all of the minis that we designed for this stream in the overlay, and they animate when we enter the combat, so look out for that. HeroForge are fantastic, so do check out the pro membership where you can get premium access to features ahead of time and beta access to things um, and all sorts of cool stuff that just makes your life a lot easier. And you can check them out at heroforge.com. 
We are delighted to be sponsored by Ultra Pro. They make accessories for D&D, Magic the Gathering, and more. My favorite part of their collection are their figurines of adorable power. Here is their gazer. Uh, they also make other things such as deck boxes uh, if you play Magic the Gathering. You can find all of Ultra Pro stuff at ultrapro.com. Hey friends, check out our new sponsor, Phoenix Dice, for a carefully created menagerie of click clack math rocks for your delectation. Check out their entire selection at phoenixdice.com. And just so you know, Phoenix Dice are all about living gloriously in the worlds of tabletop games and sustainably in this one, which means their dice are working to be recycled, their packaging is recycled, the dice are made of sustainable materials. It's all great stuff. You should definitely get involved. You can also join us today in chat with a chance to be in a raffle and win some Phoenix Dice of your own. Just put exclamation mark dice into chat and you'll be in with a chance to win. We are proud to be sponsored by Alchemy RPG. Reimagine your gaming experience with Alchemy. They're focused on creating immersive cinematic experiences everywhere you interact with tabletop role-playing games. You can be playing a game, creating a world, streaming, watching live games, discovering new content, look at all the cool stuff that they are doing there. You can use environmental motion art, scene-based music, seamless character management to run your games over the internet, with upcoming features including homebrew content, streaming overlays, and spectator mode. So go and check out alchemyrpg.com. We're delighted to be supported by Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms, a Dungeons & Dragons strategy video game that brings together D&D characters from novels, adventures, and multiple live streams into a single grand adventure. Select your heroes and formation and battle through waves of monsters for free on PC, phone, PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo Switch. You can pop exclamation code into chat for a free Electrum chest. We are also supported by Warriors of Waterdeep. Take your team of warriors on a quest spanning the Forgotten Realms, all on your mobile. Power up your teams with items, work with your guild to defeat hordes of enemies, and test your metal in the arena. And to make all of that work, you need gems! As we frequently say, the hunt for gems is real. Pop exclamation mark wow gems into chat for a link to collect free gems and get yourself that nice sword you've been looking at or revive your heroes against a deadly foe. Download link exclamation mark warriors of Waterdeep in chat. We're delighted to be supported by Neverwinter. In Neverwinter, explore and defend one of the most beautiful cities from Dungeons and Dragons' Forgotten Realms campaign setting as it rises from the ashes of destruction. Epic stories, action combat, and classic role-playing await those heroes courageous enough to enter the fantastic world of Neverwinter. Neverwinter is completely free to play, so set yourself up an account today and pop exclamation mark NW gift into chat for a link to a free gift. Check out our supporters at D&D Beyond, your guide to digital dirt and dirt. Make character sheets online, share them in a campaign, and track all of those tasty little stats in one easy place. You can use the Beyond app to track the characters on the go. You can also use their encounter tracker and archive monsters to run any smooth combat thing. You know what I'm saying. You're a DM. You've done this before. You know D&D Beyond is the place to go. You can also check out our character sheets and an exclamation point characters in Twitch chat below. Check out our wonderful supporters, Elderwood Academy, who make beautiful bespoke gaming themed gear, including hex chest dice boxes, spellbook deck boxes disguised as bespoke ancient arcane tomes, and scroll and codex dice tower and rolling tray pairings. Make your own with their online designer at elderwoodacademy.com. This stream will run for three hours, and there will be a roughly five to ten minute break somewhere near the middle. We run shows on Monday, Tuesday and Friday at 6pm Greenwich Meridian slash British Summertime, which is 10am Pacific Time, 1pm Eastern Standard Time, 7pm in mainland Europe, and 2am Tuesday morning in Japan and parts of Australia. On Mondays and Tuesdays, we run TTRPG streams for three hours. And on Fridays, we run our talk show, Talk Together, for one hour. Our TTRPG streams can be one shots, four, six, eight, or 12 weeks long. You can always find our latest schedule at twitch.tv slash RollTogetherRPG.
slash schedule. We are Roll Together RPG on all socials, so find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and even TikTok. Links in chat. Thank you to our D20 Club on Patreon. Uh, you can find a link in chat to help us make our shows from just one pound, one dollar, or one gold piece, and unlock more tiers by joining. Our D20 Club are fab. Uh, they've created a fan Discord for us. Um, they've also made a wiki page for Roll Together. You can find that at rolltogether.fandom.com. Uh, welcome to our podcast listeners. Um, if you also would like to listen to us via podcast, you can search Roll Together RPG on your favourite podcast provider. If we're not there, let us know and we will add ourselves to that list. Finally, we play with a diverse group of players who play a diverse set of characters with wide-ranging sexual and gender identities. Our tables are trans and GNC positive, and we encourage and champion trans and GNC players and characters in our games. The DM and players may portray characters that are of a different gender to their own, and while we aim to avoid misgendering, we do acknowledge that it does sometimes happen, and have a company policy in place for correction, should the need arise. If you think we've missed anything, please let us know. You can drop us an email at RollTogetherRPG at gmail.com or just pop something into chat. We're always open to hearing about how we can do things better. We use the TTRPG Safety Toolkit as part of play. If you put exclamation mark safety into chat right now, there'll be a link to it, or you can uh, ask us about it on any of our social medias. We're happy to share it. It is uh, created by uh, Lauren Bryant and Kiana Shaw, and is an absolutely excellent way to play safely at your tables, and we couldn't recommend it more. If you pop exclamation mark safety into chat as well, you'll also see a link to content warnings. Uh, this campaign does sometimes stray into the dark, especially party PvP, party and party conflict. So uh, do check that out and see if there's anything there you'd like to avoid. Anyway, without further ado, here's the intro. everyone and welcome to chapter five of the wreckage of Mithranor. the party are almost in Mithranor. They, okay they've been on the outskirts of Mithranor for a couple of sessions now so i think that counts in here because it's, no. it's it's where it, when i play no, no, pool of radiance attack on Mithranor, that's you you start the game outside no. the, anyway we're never going to game do you spend gonna... those hides <laughs> is, there, is there a video game no one's ever mentioned it at all Am I not allowed to have nice things? Am I not allowed? No, I think we should, that was the point I was making. We should turn around these tunnels and head back out and explore the outside of Mithranor even more. Oh, look, an impenetrable wall has fallen. <laughs> I cast count a spell. No, no, it's not a spell. Plot on it's spell magic. We just sit down where we are and we continue role playing for the rest yeah. of the campaign. We just refuse okay. to move. Okay, I see what today's going to be like. Fine. Um, but yes, these lovely players all play their lovely characters, and you have all started to come together to form a bit of a connection, a group, a certain groupthink understanding with some tension in between as well. But I think last we really got over the hump last week, which was great. So. Did we? Did we? Is that how you describe it? Have I, have I missed something? I feel like we're rolling down the valley, you know, <laughs> to okay. another hill. Bonding <laughs> over Ava's horrific backstory and trying to find food for Ildrathne. I, I think gave you all potions. Exactly. That was lovely. Yes, you did. Oh, yeah, there is no, a you got certain us. <laughs> amount. Anyway, um, so yes, the party have just long rested, and you are about to make your way through the tunnels underneath the um, city of Mithranor, made by dwarves, which seem to um, throw Anton a little bit. But yes, the uh, dwarves who lived in Mithranor. That's fair. An elven city made by dwarves. It's more multicultural <laughs> than that. I feel a bit like you're having a go at me. Um, but yes, no, they no. were called lovely things like. Um, so there's some very lovely long names. I'm not sure I get right. So my scroll wheel seems to think that down is up and up is down. Kefweldenor. And for no, no, they're not elven names. The oh. life spring wells, which pumped water around <laughs> Mithranor. And Be more like Grundlefog. The channels Balhammer. of the wind that allowed for, hey, 
air conditioning and air to be taken oh. around different parts of Mithranor. So yes, yes, there were some nice names that weren't Chalath and Welsh noises. Welsh noises. Yeah. So yes. Um, you're in those. And the tunnels are old, they are abandoned, scrubbed, they are grimy as all hell. Um, it's um, a lot of dust that's settled and gotten a bit wet, so it's nasty and uh, dirty. Though you did find some insects for your draft need to, to chew on, so that's good. Oh, yeah. Some that's orange good. juice insects. I offered, out of purely practical motivations, and apparently wasn't sure. good enough. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Now Sorry. I'm starting to doubt that they were practical motivations. <laughs> was this all a trick? Is this all some kind of horrific setup? No, it's fine. Okay, but yes, you are heading down these tunnels. It is dark, dank, and mysterious. Um, and um, you have just moved forward to a point where you can see, you saw that outside Mithranor, the Mithal, the elven, ancient elven magic that protected the city and went wrong, famously, many times before, and the Mithalar of the... Um, ancient city of Shade, full Tanthar, a Netherese city that crashed into Mithranor, appear to be interacting with each other and creating a sort of dome shield effect with almost like um, hexagonal um, tessellating patterns that move out and around from it in a nice sort of blue-green tinge. Um, this appears to extend underground. As you can see ahead of you in the tunnel, these, it's not quite a full like tessellating bit because the tunnel is small, but it is um, parts of the shield are there. And you also see that it is flashing and sparking slightly as in it's not perfect here, mostly because uh, it, where it interacts with the cables on the side of the tunnels that appear to be for water, air, all that sort of thing, um, there appears to be some kind of there's been some kind of reaction there that you don't quite understand what's going on. You're still about sixty feet away, and you were being somewhat stealthy to reach up to this point. You do hear some voices. Remind me of who speaks infernal. Yes. Ooh, Neat. yes. Or abyssal. I will allow either. Should have made that clear in the first one. That was my error. What? Like, does someone have abyssal but not infernal? I have neither. Oh, I have neither. Okay, so Nate knows it because Nate travelled the world and Ephemera and Ava know because the wand of Orcus is in their bag. <laughs> but yes. Um, Nate, Nate had a... His, it was his heavy metal face. You were that character from Strange Things everyone loves right now because they play guitar and it's cool. Um, yes. So you can hear up ahead voices in Infernal. Um, you know it's Infernal because Infernal has very specific sounds like, I'm going to say a bit Klingony, and I think you know what I mean. Um, you can't make out full words at the moment, just you can hear sort of... <laughs> <laughs> from up ahead. Like There's clearly um, some kind of Infernal creature talking to each other up ahead but you can't see through the shield very well because it flashes and moves and the light's a bit blinding, so seeing past it's very difficult. Um, Anton and Nate both have intelligence scores of 20 plus, so I will give you this. The flickering is not regular or rhythmical. You couldn't go like, oh, we'll definitely get through that. We can work out the timings and find a way through. It is sporadic. Um, you would also guess from the movement in it that it is not slow enough that you would be able to jump through or anything like that. If anything got through, it was by luck, happenstance, or whatever. But this isn't like an obvious, like, we've got a way in. Uh, the ancient elf Nezaril, who invited you all to come here and hired some of you, is uh, also with you. Sure. What was, um, your, what was your plan for this, Nezaril? Okay. Well, I, I, I have been conserving my magical power to um, make a gap in the shield. Uh, I believe I'll be able to do it. I can reverse engineer some ancient um, high elven magic. Um, but this may also be an option if there is a, uh, I assumed when we saw some uh, demon, well, heard about demons coming out and saw some of their weaponry that this um, might be an option too. Both are acceptable. I'm not the sneakiest and um, it sounds like there are voices up ahead. And we hear what they're saying. I join a raw perception check. I would. Can I help with translating? Yeah. My passive is 19. That's nice. Just, just as a... <laughs> as a uh, Rolling with advantage, you are more likely to get above your passive. Your passive is only a 10 plus your modifier, so... No, it's not, because I have a plus 5 to passives because of the observant feet. Oh. I tell you what, Rebecca, roll it, and if it is lower than your passive, you can use your passive. I like that very much. Uh, that is cocked between a 9 and a 19. Oh, that's an 18, so that's 22. Right. Um, you hear two to three voices up ahead. 
it's hard to differentiate between them because they sound quite similar. Um, here's what they're saying. Why can't we take part? I want to take part too. Someone's got to guard this bit. It's important. It's so important. But why is it important? Because it is. Just shut up. Mm-hmm. Fucking hate. Bloody. Mm-hmm. Just, that's about as much as you get from 60 feet away. I heard the bat nearly broke the Joker's teeth. <laughs> <laughs> It's not quite a voice acting line you'll hear repeated over and over again bad. It's more of a, um, they're grumbling generally, but they're not having sort of an important detailed conversation about anything. They're just grumbling generally. Hmm. Would it be a good or a bad idea to speak into their heads and try to convince them to rebel against their masters? Um, I think that sounds like a brilliant idea. (laughs) Sounds wonderful. I wasn't talking to you. Sorry. <laughs> I do actually agree with um, Nate, though. That does sound rather wonderful. Oh, excellent. I'll give it a shot. I would Sorry, like to I'm speak to the, to the unsure one. Um, this, this one. Or this one. Uh, this one. This one, okay. Yeah. Hmm, okay. Why should you just have to follow yeah. things without being questioned? Uh, You're a thank God, there's someone talking in my head again. You, oh. have, you have more initiative than this. I might you need to kill you. Charge. Sorry. Um, please don't kill me. Kill him, he's just holding you back. No, no, I'm not going to kill my friend, Strange Voice. Then run away. Um... Are you going to help? Yeah, I might need to, you know, do that thing again where I, I, I get inside your head again. Um, might be Run painful. and scheme. Find your power. You are greater than this. Thanks, self-help tape. Um, can you roll me a persuasion check, please? Yes, I can. Thank you. Can I have cast guidance on this? Sure. Oh, excellent. Okay. That was a nat... 20, and I'm also <laughs> going to make it better by just adding my uh, things from a past life. Yes, in a past do. life you wrote self-help tapes. <laughs> yeah, that, that's an extra four, so now it's a 24. Plus, plus, the, plus the guidance. Plus oh, guidance. wait, it's a D4. Wait, persuasion, 24, 25, 26. And plus then guidance. guidance. So 27, 28, 29. <laughs> oh, okay. You know what? I, I, I think I should have more authority here. I think the, the voice is right. I should have... What do you mean the voice is right? What are you talking about? You listen to me, right? I think I should have more authority. What? They are now in quite a head-up discussion with each other and appear to be distracted. You've, you've distracted them successfully. This is bullshit. I don't get paid enough. <laughs> Why do you get paid more than me? Oh, I should have told them to form a union. (laughs) (laughs) Are you moving ahead? Are are they behind the shield or in front of it? You don't know, you're 60 feet away. Oh, I thought we... All right. Does nobody else want to know what the event is and why this particular patch is so important? I mean, I can talk to the dead, so, like, if, if they're dead, it's fine. Right. Do they, they might not be very helpful. Yeah, I can force them to help if they're alive, but it takes energy, so if you're happy just have a bit of a corpse chat, then that's fine. Should we go kill them? Demons, the timeline's yes. present. Coming up on corpse chat. <laughs> okay. Um, are you all moving forward, then? Uh, roll me stealth checks with advantage, because they are distracted, thanks to the nat 20 that we are. Stealth check at a flat roll. Evie, just so you know, on a th- I would I had in my head that on a thirty they would start fighting each other. He was very very close. <gasps> no. They might. I think they might still. Twenty nine is so close. They might still. We'll get to that. Don't worry. Okay. Uh, Nate will pa- uh, cast Pass Without Trace. Oh, shit. Goodness. Hot Thank shit. you. <laughs> <laughs> I did 
badly. <laughs> <laughs> you chose poorly. <laughs> All right, what we got? Uh, with Pass Without a Trace is a plus 10, yes? Yes. So, yes. Uh, 18. 14. Wow. 19. 20. 35. 35 and 24. Yeah. Wow. Bring up the average. Okay. Yeah. Neither of them are that perceptive. Yeah. Um, they're not noticing you. They're, they're very busy in conversation. They do sound like, those of you who speak Infernal, it's like... It's just that every time something good happens, I'm told not to be there. And that seems wrong to me somehow. Look, there's a hierarchy and an order to these things. We have to all work together. I don't want to work together. Um, getting up close, you do... I don't want to work together. <laughs> I will say those of you that speak speak infernal, um, you do note that you are also hearing like um, the one that sounds a bit um, miffed. There's that infernal is um, abyssal. Infernal is not their first language, and you can tell they are they are they are speaking a language that is not their own. Looks like there's demons and devils working together in here, which of course has inherent issues. Um, but yes, as you move up silently, no one notices you there. How close do you want to get to the um, zzz, 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 wall? We want to get close enough to see whether they're this side or the other side of it, right? Cool. Yeah. As you start yeah. to get closer, within about 30 feet, you can see that they're not on this side of it. Um, Ava's passive perception is 19, and we're going to use that for this. Um, the Where the wall bisects the tunnel, there is no... There's no markings or damage on the walls or anything like that. There are about a half dozen corpses, most of them very old, um, mostly almost skeletal. Um, <laughs> look like they've been bisected by the wall or sort of like part damaged by the wall or something like that. We're not sure. Um, where the wall interacts with the um, pipe, you can see that on this side of the wall, the pipe is old, dead, untouched. On the far side of the wall, there is power, light, water, you can hear that there are things pumping through, but they appear to stop at the point where the shield is. So it appears someone's getting these tunnels to activate, but something about the shield is stopping them from going past this point, and that might be part of what's causing this issue with the interaction. Um, it's obviously not an easy way in or out or anything like that. Um, Nezra will just turn to you all here and just goes, I could... I wouldn't need to get too close. So I could try and create a, a hole here, but I think they'd probably notice. I can ask them very politely not to, or again, we can just let them and then kill them. They're demons and devils. It's not going to be a great loss. Agreed. Um, how, Chris, sorry. Yeah. How, how big is the tunnel? How wide? You say uh, it was 15, 20 foot wide and tall, but there's a sort of divot out of one side of that because of these these um, almost cables take up like it's like a sort of wadge of side cables take up a good quarter of the tunnel. There's a lot of them, and there's a lot of like perspex paneling on them and stuff like that, so you can see inside them and that sort of thing. Can I make an arcana check because I've just realised that demons and devils don't technically die; they go back to their plane. So yeah. if we did kill them and try to cast speak with dead would that work they can't go back to their plane if they're trapped inside mithrin or can they roll me an arcana check ava is correct as in rebecca is correct they can't go back but um let's have some in-game like thinking the logic of this through because i think their souls are trapped within this yeah and that's only a 16. Nezaril did say that anything inside was trapped. You can presume they're also trapped in death as well as in life. Otherwise, all the demons and devils would just have killed themselves, which they didn't, because there's still loads of them here. It appears to be. There's certainly two who are now reaching a point of, if you're on my d20, just flat. Okay, let's see how this goes. Yeah. 15. You can't see them very well again because the light is so bright and it's, it's it's that sort of thing where you go, I think there's two shapes, but I can't really see that much. You see one sort of push the other one and go, No, I think it's time we had a proper chat about it. I'm going to go talk to the others about it and, and 
you know, this is bullshit. It's just not great, you know? I feel a bit like you're just... I'm not happy about it, okay? I'm just not happy about it. Look, everyone, you just need to calm down. Do you want me to go get the others as well? Is that what this is? Do you really want to do this here? If we do a good job here, we can take part in the next one, and that'll be fun. You'll get more toys. Why are you having this fight now? And what about that voice in your head? And that, it's clearly getting a bit more violent. Bushy. Bushy. Ezreal, what you're intending on doing, do you think it's more likely to be flashy, visually noticeable, or loud? I think that it will create a gap in the barrier, and I think that in doing so, might be quite violent. I also don't think I'll be able to hold it for very long at all. It may also severely hurt or exhaust me. I don't know. Elven high magic is tempestuous. Is there anything we can do to help? Um, I don't know, really. I should probably just get started and we'll see what you can do. I mean, you've got some very powerful I, spellcasters here. I'm pretty ready. I have an idea. But, well, we might be able to talk them into opening up for us. I don't think they can. If they had the ability to open and close it at will, there wouldn't be dead demons piled up over there. Well, how do you think they're getting in and out then? I think one or two managed to get through. Mm. Right. Because if they could all go, they'd go. But it's, yeah, it's statistical anomalies, isn't it? Basically, you know what I mean? It's one in a million. That's how your 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 um staff weapon thing got out. And your smaller wand, I suppose. Anyway. Would it be helpful if those two were, if you think it's going to be uh, rather violent, do you think it would be helpful if they were both blind and couldn't see? Mm-hmm. Or deaf and couldn't hear? I could help with that. We can have one at little column A, little column B. Do you think the magic would pass? I think the magic can't pass through the barrier, so I'm not sure if and that I, would work. Oh, yeah. I assumed that it wouldn't, but Ephemera was able to talk into their heads, so clearly. Interesting. Your uh, telepathic abilities, are they magical? Good question. Uh, it was a feat. Uh, no. So, no, I think? No, it's just weird head shit that's all you. That's for free, Evie. That's weird head shit that's all you. That, that's, we need a t-shirt for that. Uh. <laughs> Good. Right. Then, in which case, I'm not sure that magic would cross the barrier. I just suppose certain strange abilities might have. What about this tentacle? I might be able to, like, distract them and pull them away from me. <laughs> magic might not pass through, but what about this tentacle? <laughs> I feel like how you, you might lose that, it. How I mean, far can that reach? Well, like about, I don't know, like 60 feet or so. Excuse me. I, but, but, <laughs> like, three, but... I gotta, it's... I mean, this is just for show, really. <laughs> like... To be honest, it's not actually the same tentacle. Right. I just persuaded him to give me this because I thought it was fun. Okay. <laughs> persuaded them, but yeah. Um, I was like, you're popular with the ladies or, or the gentlemen or the other people. I mean, sometimes, but not really, no. I've just grossed myself out. Like, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're all just like... <laughs> Yes, everyone loves a tentacle. Um, all right, um, I'm going to start on, on the um, trying to break this through. But if you want to try things, you're welcome to be very careful. Though this barrier is a combination of Netherese magic and Elvenheim magic. I can only assume what happens if you touch it. Looking at the bodies on the floor, looks back at Nate. Uh, w- 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 one more moment. I'm sorry, Nizril. And Anton, did you say before? That the demons, if killed, the devils, if killed, I can't remember which one they are, um, if killed, would go back to their, usually would go back to their plane, but they cannot because they're in Mithranor. Theorising, aye, eh? aye. Eh? Because if if they could, then they would, they would leave, uh, but they, they can't, eh? so, well, they've not left, so. Okay. Either, Nezril. either. Oh, okay, okay. Nezril. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Shut up. <laughs> Nezra, mm-hmm. if you die inside, where will your soul go? 
I don't know. Probably staying the ethereal plane around here, uh, traps forever as a ghost. I don't think <laughs> Nazarel is special. I think if any of us die, we might just stay put. Nazarel closes their eyes briefly, opens them again. I've just checked the ethereal, looks pretty normal. Well, that's because none of us are dead. I mean, I don't know. The so ethereal, what? people last in the deep ethereal, they last in the regular ethereal. Like, it's just, you'd be a ghost, you wouldn't be able to leave, you'd be stuck in the ethereal plane. There. I don't want to make lots of wild conjecture here. If things are trapped inside and can't uh, leave through plano travel, then their souls can't leave either. Does that mean that this shield goes into the ethereal, goes into the astral? I don't know. All I know is that I need to get inside, so I'd like to do that. Hey, well, let's go for it. Unless anyone oh, has any yes. objections. No. Um. Um, so I think Nate is going to, yeah, plow his... Uh, shove his tentacle into the ground at his feet. Nope. No. <laughs> you can if you like, just phrasing. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's, again, it's just a manif- his manifestation of how it works. But. Sure. Do you want um, the tentacle to reach up on the other side of this shield? Yeah, turn up. So I've down, down the, I don't know, cave bit from from the guys, uh, or the, the demon and devil pair. Yeah, like, so I guess from where I am, it would have to be like maybe 40, 50 feet, 60 feet from me. As you reach into the ground and try an effect on the far side, gee, I'm not going to penalize you for having a cool visual for how your tentacle works. You cannot form the tentacle on the far side of this. The magic will not pass through it. Um, you don't get like, a, my tentacle goes into the ground and like, oh, I get, I get damaged by it because that's just flavor that you've added and that's fine. You, I'm going to say you reach into the ground to do what you usually do and it's blocked. You can't you can't summon anything on the far side of this shield. Uh, yeah, no, that's that's not going to work. Mm, so it, it is selective then. If your telepathy can go through. Shall we then? Just make it. Thought it. There's only two demons. <clears throat> right, I will get started. Um, fingers crossed. And Nezwa is going to sit cross-legged on the ground. Press digitate their clothes a little bit. Um, and is then going to. Um... Anton, how much do you know about Elvenheim magic? Are we asking Niall or Anton? <laughs> I'm asking how much Anton knows, and also, Niall, if there's something you particularly want to see or hear about, let me know. That's a great I just rolled a nat 20 for an arcana check. Uh, I think just to say. That you do. Uh, Nate, Nate. 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 <laughs> I think Anton knows. Nate. Nate also just happens to just listen in. Um, no, I think Anton knows everything that you do now. Same Sweet. fascination, uh, same like, God, I have it. It's like a different way of using the weave. So most most magic users um, take power from the weave and then channel it into something. Mm-hmm. Whereas I believe um, Elven High Magic changes the weave or something. I can't remember precisely what it does, but it, it, it literally, it's like it changes the laws of physics rather than Rather than like empowering yourself, mm-hmm. it's like literally playing God. Nazarel sat. Anton's fascination with Elven High Magic, you probably gets the better of you a little bit as you watch. Um, they are humming quietly to themselves. And the air around you is humming in a harmonic frequency. And it seems to spread out from them a little bit, this sort of low, gentle. <laughs> and you all start hearing it echo around inside your heads as well. And the shield in front of you appears to zap in and then almost hold place. Like it's trying to zap out, but can't. As well as holding onto their staff, they always hold onto their staff, and they will just slowly reach forward and bring the staff down. And as they do, the tunnel above you, a rent starts to <laughs> form through the tunnel. Like, Leather is literally disappropriating dis- matter. It no longer exists together. And as they do towards the shield, it impacts the shield, and the shield also. <laughs> Flays and splays out. For a second, 
it looks like there's nothing behind it because it looks like the world behind it doesn't exist. And then that flashes out of existence and you are just looking at the world as is, but this shield doesn't exist in a jagged tear in the center. Um, there is a demon and a devil on the far side. Um, one is quite tall with um, reddish skin and is being quite right with the other one. Well, one is a bit shorter and has a beard made up entirely of sort of tentacular snakes. And, um, <laughs> and they're both I love your bearded devil. <laughs> they're also both wearing, you will note quickly while this is happening, their armor is hodgepodge, but it's got an almost like sci-fi quality to it. There's like sort of jumpsuity style elements to it. And there's um, like material you wouldn't recognize. Plastic. Um, there's like elements of it that you're like, the fuck is that? Like it, it looks weird and alien. And they both seem to have these strange like staves and wands that um, Nate and Anton have picked up. You will see that right ahead of you because of Ephemera's amazing role. They haven't noticed this. In fact, it almost looks like from their perspective, they can't see this at all because from their perspective, the world has not changed, whereas from yours, it has. Almost like these two timelines are concurrent. Mezril, as you notice, is holding the staff and their knuckles start to whiten slightly and a bead of sweat drips down the side of their face. They don't say anything. They're just staring intently at the space in front of them. What would you all like to do? The Imandel have not noticed you yet. We, uh, we're going I think in. we should get moving, yeah. yeah. Right. You bring them. I'm just going to charge ahead. Um, so Nate will help Nezaril. Um Okay. Are you going to... Um, how are you going to help them? Because currently they just sat there. Uh, okay. Um... Oh, I guess I'll, I'll go down to them. So, are you able to keep this up and get through yourself? Like, or do you need me to, like, carry you, or...? Uh, they turn and look at you, and the look on their face is one of elation that they've managed to do this, but also fear. I don't know. I'm going to run to the other side. Okay. Okay. I'm going to run to the other side and take up a stance and try to match the frequency that they're humming and see if I can tap into what they're doing. Wow. We'll come back to that because, holy shit. Um, Ava, Ephemera, I've heard from the other three. What are you two doing? Just watching it and going, yep. I would like to casually saunter through. <laughs> we don't have DiCaprio going for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Fine. Ephemera just casually saunters through. Just da 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 da. No oh, issue. Look, it's pretty over here. No oh. things. Um, get to that in a second. Sorry, Ava. What do you do? Uh, I'm going to wait by Nazarel. Okay. Not to help, but because I don't trust them, and they said they're coming in with us, and I don't want us all to be on one side of the barrier and them to be on the other. That we can't get back the out the other way. Mm -hmm. They're coming in. Okay. Um, Ephemera, Ildrefni. Ildrefni, as you charge in, Ephemera, as you saunter in. Um, the tunnel on this side is also filthy, but it shows signs of uh, movement and it shows signs of um, people moving around and disrupting and touching things. Um, it looks more like a habitation. However, there are skulls, bits of weird metallic detritus sort of arrayed in horrific like i was gonna say artwork but it's not art it's more like it's more like tribal barriers it's this is our domain kind of stuff um you don't recognize half the skulls in here um <laughs> the Nick was here. A little bit. yeah 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 a little bit um it's filthy but not of just of the like dust and crap that's already been in these tunnels also like bits of discarded rubbish food bones all sorts of other things um, the Destiny, as you charge inside, am I to assume you're going to run up and whack one of them in the head? Uh, well, my, my theory actually was, uh, if Ephemera offered to, to do the other side of blindness deafness, I'd just run forward and, and hit the two of them with probably deafness, so they can't hear me clonk, 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 clonk. Um, 
Okay. And then uh, and then see if Ephemera follows suit. You might need to tell Ephemera what sure. is going on. <laughs> Let's have that conversation, and I will say this would count technically as a surprise round. We don't okay. need to enter initiative necessarily, because if they're blinded and deafened, I'm not going to run an entire initiative of them going, where are you? I will literally just narrate stuff that happens. Go on. As we beat the crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there's only two of them, but if we blind and deaf them, then uh, we, we might be able to just walk past them and avoid having to fight them at all. I mean, you are charging through a, a gap in a shield. It's don't have that much time. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, which one do you? Which one do you want to take? Blind or deaf? I, 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 will, I will deafen. Clonk, 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 clonk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like charging in. Oh, it's an important mission. If everyone's there, you're like, oh, <laughs> slowly making your way. Uh, would you? What do I have to roll? For your uh, blindness, they are and deafness. Con missions? saves. Oh dear. Yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> Okay, that's annoying. As you charge in, the big one, the one in red, goes, Hey, what's going on? Hey! And it's like flailing around and can't see anything. The other one looks a bit confused, looks around at all of you and says, You got it! Who are you? What? (laughs) Pokes hold of their ear. One is blinded, one is deafened. (laughs) I didn't even tell you the DC. (laughs) Oh, you, you don't need to, because they were rolls of, like, 5 and 20, respectively. Like, it was, yeah. Like, there was no need for DCs on that one. Cool. They they, they have seen you. Um, they can still enter initiative because they are, in one case, they can see you. Um, in one case, they can hear you. What's the third monkey? He can't speak. Well, there's, there's no mute devils or demons in here. Um, right, but the two of them have seen you, and I would like us all to roll initiative, please, <sighs> because they are not... Completely confuddled. Address. Saucy 14. Saucy 14. Ooh. Gay chips and dip into that sauce. <laughs> or oh, your tentacle. 15. <laughs> 15. <laughs> also 15. Uh, Ava, what's your uh, dexterity mod? Plus two. Grassy? Zero. Okay. Nine. Nine. And Anton? Eight. Eight. Wow. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh, go first? What? Ava, you're going first. Nezaril is on the ground in front of you. Um, Anton is sitting alongside Nezaril and is trying to tap in and help. Oh, no, I went to the other side of the shield. So I went inside the shield and I'm trying to keep it open from my side. Oh, I see. Fine. Okay. Anton has run inside behind the other two and um, is just sort of crouched by the shield going, trying to <laughs> desperately join in with what Nezaril's doing. Um, but um, Nate is still with you and trying to help Nezaril up. Hold Nate up. has had an idea and is currently searching his pockets. There we go. What would you like to do? Um, one of them is less incapacitated than the other, right? Uh, one is blinded, one is deafened. I'll take the one who can still see. Mm-hmm. Fire through the hole. Yeah, totally fine. Uh, let's use. Oh, it's going to be a short combat. A hex isn't worth the six Eldritch Blast, so let's just send all six. Do they look <laughs> strong, or do they look like maybe six Eldritch Blasts would be more than enough to finish them off? Ish. Okay, um, you would know that bearded devils do not rank very high in. Hell's hierarchy. And cool. the bearded devil is the deafened one. It doesn't change anything about actually what I do. It's literally just whether I give you the numbers separately or all together. So I will do the separately. So I need 6d20. That fell over. Uh, uh, that is 27, 19, 16, 23. 24 and a nat 20 for 32. Uh, well, none of those. six at a time. This none can't... of those were under a 13, so they all hit. Lovely. <laughs> um, 
Cool. Oh, dude, just trying to do his god dirty. Just getting absolutely, <laughs> absolutely Don't a blow try and make them sympathetic. They are devils and demons. They are not pleasant. You don't know where the others are. They were sad not to be joining him whenever the others were doing, and it was awful. So that's 7d10 plus 30. Um... Would you Can we assume that when the first one's dead, I start hitting the second one? Because you do send yeah. them sequentially rather than totally all at once. Absolutely fine, of course we can. Uh, 5, 10, 14, 16, 17, 24, 34, 30. Um, no, 34 plus 8 is 42. Uh, that is 7, so 72 points, yeah. Uh, 72 points of damage. Uh, the one that is deaf and turn around, eh, what are you doing? As six Eldritch Blasts shoot out from Ava through the gap and just go flying through. Ava, as your Eldritch Blasts pass through the shield, could you please roll me a d10? Yes, I could, Chris. Thank Do you. I want to is the question. That's that really not my eight. call. Uh, you're the DM. Yeah. <laughs> this is exactly your call. Interesting. Uh, please roll me a d4. Mm-hmm. I'm going to roll the incongruous d4. Uh, <laughs> it was a three. Okay. As your Eldritch Blasts pass through the um, tear in magic, they seem to pick up more necrotic energy as they go. They get sort of empowered, infused with necrotic energy as they pass through. And um, as they impact against the first demon, who you've already killed, um, they will also explode in a way that you did not expect them to do. Um, are you going to say that you move the damage across to the other one when you complete? Yeah, fine. So they're going to hit both of them. That's okay. Uh, Eldrathni, Ephemera, Anton, you're all on the far side of the wall. Can you all please make me a constitution saving throw? <laughs> it's not your fault. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Eight. <clears throat> oh dear. Ten. Oh dear. You don't have any resistances to necrotic. Do you have resistance to chronic necrotic, Evie? As a fat uh, as ephemera. I have resistance. Yeah, you mean ephemera does not. Okay. Um, that's not too bad. Um, ephemera and Anton both take eight points of necrotic damage. Uh, Ephemera, you take four. Um, does this count as, wait, where's my reaction? Um, something I could intercept on one of them. I mean, fuck yeah. How do you intercept a, a cloud of necrotic explosion as it passes over you and Ephemera and Anton? I'd let you intercept damage for one of them. Okay. Uh, um, I, like a I, I, don't, I don't know which one looks... That, like, Ephemera is quite chunky now with the Wand of Orcas, actually. Surprisingly chunky. I, I think... I think it's just uh, as soon as the cloud starts radiating out, would sort of turn and... They do a very cool, like, cloak flip to kind of, like, waft the cloud away. Yeah. Between yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they do. And ephemera. Yeah, that's great. Like, you you waft. <laughs> you do a waft. <laughs> and um, the cloud, as it expands out and explodes in a roiling cloud manner, um, washes over towards ephemera, and then you manage to dissipate it. However, you'd also note that the cloud itself, yes. Are you right? Yeah. You, Sorry, it's completely okay if this is not going to be a thing. But I was looking at my fungal infestation thing I can do, and it doesn't specify that to reanimate something dead that dies within 10 feet of me, it doesn't specify that it needs to be whole. That makes sense. The mushrooms would, like, fill in the... Well, the spores would fill in the gaps, wouldn't they? I have no beef with you having, like, bits of demon that, that follow you around. I would like to animate a demon. We'll come to that, okay? But yes, um, this cloud. Um, Ildreth, you start to waft it away from Ephemera in a cool way. And um, but as you do, you note the cloud is also it's all it's funneling and pulling and being dragged to the point where the shield hits the hits the conduit and all goes inside. And the sort of almost like glass see-through bits you can see on the side. There's a 
you see, oh, it's a sort of blue, it looks like it's running water or something like that. Something just darkens horribly and then dissipates out. Um, one, the devil, uh, the bearded devil is in pieces, just destroyed beyond all belief. Like, if Emma, if you want to animate that one, um, you could probably get the head or maybe like an arm. Oh, Stick it together. A <laughs> so it's a head arm. Lovely. Um, <laughs> you can start to animate the head arm. Is it just a thing you do as a reaction? That's the thing that it's happens. It's just a reaction. You animate the head with the tentacly beard, attaching itself to like mushrooms and fungus. Just <laughs> make it attach itself to the arm. Need another now... wand of Orcus. It's the same shape. <laughs> and it's now going to do a sort of horrific sort of jump walk as it sort of moves around. Do you give it any commands? Uh, let's see. You tell us that it's you doing oh. that. That one's like, with me oh. now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I shall call you Icarus. <laughs> Good Icarus. Good. Well, you I-C-H. Will protect us. <laughs> you what? Sorry, man. <laughs> you will protect us. Um, it, uh, you will protect us. It is going to <laughs> start horribly... <laughs> jumping on its wrist over towards the remainder of its body. We'll come back to that. Um, Please tell us that right now there is a little Hero Forge mini of Icarus <laughs> in the corner of the screen. I mean, I'm going to have a chat with Sean. <laughs> I feel like you'd be making that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I could make that. No, no, no. Um, anyway, um, the, <laughs> the demon... <laughs> What's going on? Hang on. Wow, you really hurts! Blinded, can't see a thing, and um, has not been annihilated by this, but is looking very confused and very upset. Can I just, to finish my turn, sure. um, I've used action and bonus actions just as movement will pick up, like help up um, Nezaril and be like, you can cast and walk, come on, and use my movement to um, take them half my movement. Roll me an athletics check. Uh huh. <laughs> You said pick them up with your strength of five. I'm just I meant saying. like like help them off the floor, not like bear them along. No, no, I said they are currently. It looks like they can't move. Right, Nate's there, but Ooh, just a weak old person. person. Well, that was sixteen Nate. minus three, so thirteen. If you start to try and lift them, you realise that their um, joints, everything is locked. Hmm. They can't. Unstraighten their legs. Hang on a sec. I've, I've got an idea. I just need to find a thing. Just, just a second. I will hold on yeah. <laughs> and wait to hopefully assist Nate with his movement later. That's not a thing, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> I will allow that you are holding your movement to help with movement. Blah 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 rules. We'll work it out. Um, blah, 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 rules. <laughs> blah 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 rules. Blah 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 rules. Just gonna yell back through. Do you need me to come back there? <laughs> no, we're all right. I don't think you can. I think that's sort of the point. Yes, right. Miss, yes, Miss Trunch will return. <laughs> Do you need me to come back there? I will turn this adventure party around. <laughs> Look, I will lift the old person if I have to, but you need me to tell. I need you to tell me to come back. I'm fine. We'll. Uh, well, in that case, just swing around and wallop the uh, the other. This one's the devil. Uh, demon. De- the, the wallop the demon straight to the stomach. Okay. <laughs> uh, with advantage, because it's blinded. Yeah, there's no idea there. Yeah. Uh, it's that... screaming. Do I need to turn this bus around? <laughs> <laughs> Cocoon. Uh, that is a uh, twenty-nine. Oh, yeah, of course that hits. No, this random, oh, I've got an AC of three. Oh, no, <laughs> gotcha. It might have. Shield. <laughs> <laughs> That's very fair. It might have done, but no, it doesn't. Okay, so the base is 2d8 plus 9, so that's, mm-hmm. uh, oh, that was rubbish. Um, 7 plus 9, so that's, uh, words, 16. Uh, and oh well, fine because that was rubbish. I will. I'll do a smite. No. Uh, no. Yeah. Your DM is going to politely advise you not to use a smite. 
Oh, great. Okay. Ava's done enough. Great. Oh, I'm yeah, just going to yeah, yeah. whack it then. There was a necrotic explosion. Um, as right. you lean in and whack it with the hammer, whack it with a hammer, um, you will hit it in the middle of its chest. You note that on its chest it has two swords, like, you wouldn't know what bandoliers are. Belts. It's wearing belts over its shoulders. Kind of a weird look. And there appear to be sort of strange looking things hanging off various loops on the belts. Um, would you be Maybe. very careful not to hit them? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Would you be very careful to hit them, not knowing what they are, Ildrefni? I rolled a 29 for accuracy. Right. Squish that head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you hit it, and don't hit any of the little dangling... Look like Christmas tree on this? Um, <laughs> you don't hit any of the dangling things. Just... Poof, and it just poof, falls over, and as it does, um, it spits up some demon Icarish blood and will just lie there looking out for the count, like you have significantly hurt this one to the point where it's probably like dying. Are you sure you don't want this one that can actually still walk? To ephemera. Oh, I can do that one as well. Hang on. <gasps> I don't have a reaction anymore. No, but... you don't. <laughs> Maybe in a moment. <laughs> well, Give me six you... seconds. <laughs> what did you call the, the head on the end, the, the horrible head on the end of an arm? What did you call that? Icarus. Icarus, thank you. Icarus just uh, looks back at you with a bit like a, am I not good enough for you? <laughs> there's nothing that says I can't have two at the same time. I, I'm sure there is. It's about your reaction economy, though, and it's already oh. dead now. Um, anyway, Icarus will keep moving across the floor. Um, it will occasionally slip in some ichor or some blood, and when it does, just <laughs> the hand will work really hard to, like, pick itself up. <laughs> but the head is significantly heavy, so one arm... Uh, right, Ephemera, it is your turn now. Cool. So, for clarity, is there just Icarus, or is there anything else? Uh, the two that you had here are, are gone. The um, the bit of the tunnel that you're in, it looks like... Oh, how do I describe this? There are tunnels going off in, like, a, um, there's one going this way and one going that way, and the hole was here. So you're, you're like, you cover, the hole covered a certain part of a T-junction. Like, one aspect of T-junction, so there's a cross here that you could look down. There's tunnels going either direction. There's cables going down either two of them. This sort of hellish paraphernalia, visual aesthetic is everywhere. Um, you're not. You, if you listened, free perception check. Why not? Free perception check. I am rolling like garbage today. Uh, that is an eleven. Uh, you can hear some shouting in Infernal Abyssal. Bit of, bit of both, um, you can't make it out or work out which direction it's coming from. Well, there's nothing to attack in this initiative order at the moment, so I'm just going to go and give Icarus a bit of a pep talk, I guess. Uh, Icarus is, is, is sort of hopping, yeah, is hopping towards the weapon that um, the Bearded Devil dropped, which looks very similar to the ones that... Um, Anton and Nate picked up that you've probably seen slung over shoulders and that sort of thing. In that case, can I please get the weapon and give it to Icarus? How is your head with a single arm that it's walking on going to hold a gun? With difficulty. <laughs> like, maybe, like... So it'd be like that, and then the crook of the head would be, like, holding the, the barrel, and it'd be like, there'd be no support. <laughs> Balancing I on his elbow. Yeah. I have a visual. Mm -hmm. of, you know, in Star Wars, when Jar Jar gets a droid arm stuck to his leg and he's jumping yeah. about and it's shooting everything just as it's kind of flopping and shooting and flopping about. I mean, that is a thing that happened in a terrible film. <laughs> That's the visual I'm getting, is like, as Icarus like hops about, it just kind of fires. You know what, you know what? Evie, That's if Evie's you choice. want to leave Icarus with a, a gun, you're welcome to. That is what I'm saying. You are welcome to. Okay, I have to now. Fine, good. It happens. Um, <laughs> I think he'll hold it up and it can sort of like awkwardly like hold it between where the head and the arm have created an unholy fusion, like sort of poking off at a random angle. You know what's going to happen? I just kind of nod to Icarus and like, you've got this, little buddy. <laughs> Still a zombie. Um, cool. From the corridor, you will hear shouting and voices as figures start running down the corridor towards you. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this. Right. 
<laughs> gotta start here. Um, you, all three of you who are on the far side of this wall, um, you hear this shouting, look up a tunnel, and you see more demons and devils, a combination of demons and devils. Some of them have um, very classic demonic horns, some of them have some broken off. It looks like a hodgepodge army of fiends that appear to be working together, which is weird. Um, running down the corridor towards you are a good ten, and as they go, two or three of them will take these yeah, what look like tree ornaments and start throwing them at you. Ugh. Now I feel dumb for not holding an action. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, uh, hello, Luke, uh, can we just talk? A tree ornament will... Hang on. I thought you were going to say Luke. I am your father. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some of these tree ornaments, three of them, in fact, will doom, 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 land in amongst the three of you. <laughs> just looking at it, Ildra. How weird. <laughs> uh, all three of them will <laughs> explode yeah. as they are grenades. Yeah. Uh, can the three of you please make me a dexterity saving throw? <laughs> Ooh. What do you think that is, Anton? It was a. I'll go find my dex modifier. You can't find my dex modifier. Oh, sorry. As in, like, what did I think that explosive was? It's probably an explosive. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> got 20. Okay. Nice for you. That's nice. What did you get, two. Ultra? I you got hit two. points. <laughs> what did you get? Two. Two. No modifiers, just two. Divide no. mine by ten. Yeah. <laughs> Ephemera, what did you get? Eight. Cool. Um, these things will explode. Explosion. A bit like a fireball. They're like mini fireballs. It's so amazing. <laughs> like, like mini fireballs, the closest you would have, and then you, you realise these mini fireballs are full of frags. They're full of shards of metal that are cutting into. Like, what the hell is this? Oh, do I need probably need to roll for Icarus? That's a good point. Roll for Icarus. <laughs> okay, Icarus rolled a nat twenty. So, <laughs> do you have hit points for Icarus? Yes, one. Oh, one. Aww. Icarus has one hit point. Sweet little baby. Not anymore, he doesn't. <laughs> no! My okay. baby! Okay. You technically roll for half damage. However, because Icarus is clearly someone that you care about, I will say that Icarus has evasion because he's just a head and an arm. <laughs> so- <Yeah. laughs> technically, Icarus can only take one point of damage. Half of that is a half, which you round down to zero. I mean, that's a mathematical way of looking at it, true. Okay. <laughs> Just so you know, I'm writing this down for damage. future reference. Icarus <laughs> has survived this moment. Uh, just, just, just like leaping off into the distance and just doesn't quite know what happened. Um, but the explosions will damage all of you. Uh, 16 points of damage to those who failed, which is Ephemera and Ilkrathny, and 8 to Anton. But, uh, are they fire eight. damage? Uh, they are fire and slashing, half and half. Okay, so just to make that complicated, I take eight points of slashing and four points of fire then. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, now can you can you take three quarters damage from these throughout the rest of the campaign? Thanks. Great. <laughs> okay, thanks, okay, thanks. Um, good, right. <laughs> um, as these explode all round you, um, Eldra, you're standing next to the body of the demon. Can you roll me a d100, please? Oh, God. What is happening? Chain reactions. Oh. 47. <clears throat> okay. Um, you realize what these things are. And as one goes up here, you look at, you look oh, over at the body and uh, you don't know whether it's an issue or not. So you just sort of like kick roll the body over. Just it just lands. None of them go off. But now okay. if they did, you're probably shielded a little. It's fine. Okay. Right. I don't need to okay. Just body parts will be bludgeoning us to death. (laughs) (laughs) Um, While some of them throw things, others are going to start opening fire. Time to roll. Okay. Anyway, I started blasting. Anyway, I just started blasting. Anton, does a 10 hit you? No. And does a 10 hit you? Oh, you know what, actually? (laughs) Uh, Eldra, does a 15 hit you? 
No. Yes, no. How? How is it rolling the... It's another 15, doesn't matter. Um, ephemera does a nine hit you. These are stormtroopers. Fighting no. stormtroopers. I don't know how I've done this. <laughs> <laughs> does a 10 hit you? No. The walls around you just... Like... Shots from what we would understand as laser rifles um, impact the wall, and like where they hit, they appear to like melt a perfect hole where they impact, almost like these things are literally cutting through. Um, Elder, you would recognize that there's some kind of radiant damage being done here, some kind of like light damage being done here, which is strange. So, um, but these figures are all charging towards you, throwing grenades and shooting laser rifles and pistols uh, at you, but they fail to do that much. Um, that's the end of their turn. Nate. So yes, for for Nate's turn, uh, Nate's patting down pockets finally pulls out uh, his magic kazoo uh, and just kind of uh, standing next to um, Nezaril will go, all right, just, just uh, well, I mean, keep doing what you're doing and try not to get distracted by this, I suppose. Mm-hmm. And cast levitate on him. On them. on them, sorry. Um, <laughs> and so as, as Nezaril starts levitating up in the ground, up, up from the floor, uh, is just going to grab like the, the rope sort of in the middle of their back uh, and just start gently uh, pushing them towards towards the opening. Cheap. I yeah. never give DM inspiration. You know that I don't, but I have to for that. That was That's just glorious. Thank you. You start moving Nezaril forward. Absolute start... move. <laughs> Nezaril wasn't reacting. What you do see is they're sort of frozen in place, and they do sort of look a bit confused <laughs> as you move them like a drone through and around. Yes, you can easily pass through the hole in the gate with no issue at all. Of course you can. They have Amazing. no friction anymore. Um, they're still locked in place, though. Um, Ava, I will say, because you held movement effectively, you can go with them so you're all on the far side if you want to be. Yes, please. That's perfectly fine. Uh, Nezril is still floating awkwardly in midair. As they pass through and see all of you are passed through, it's not their turn. Um, good, right. As my bonus action, um, I will, again, tentacle uh, into the ground mm. now that I'm on the other side. Uh, and I want to, yeah, manifest the tentacle in front of the people that are um, coming towards us. How far away sure. are they at the moment? Uh, they charged, they, they all used a dash action. They're probably about 30 feet away at this point. Okay, 250, yeah, cool. you know, on a range. Um, cool. I will do it five feet in front of them then. And I think as, yeah, when I create the tentacle as a bonus action, I can make a uh, an attack. <laughs> the tentacle comes out of the ground in front of them and just Flit, flaps around there. You're going to just try and grab the first one in front. Yeah. A reminder that demons and devils are not fantastic, as in they they don't take much cold damage. Cool. Um, where is where came is up it? in the first episode? I'm just making sure that I've shared it again. Uh, cool. So I make ah, that's what it is. That's fair. Sorry, just a sec. It's all right. Uh, try to remember what my attack modifier is. Not much. <laughs> we'll see. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's, uh, it's a 26 to hit. Yes, you definitively hit. The thing tentacle <laughs> comes out of the ground and just grabs the first one that's running forward by the face. A demon who just bam, goes flying like into the tentacle and the legs do a cartoon like flip up either side of the tentacle as you grab hold. Um, I find um, that amusing. That- is me, me too. Um, so let's do that, and then so yeah, that is yeah. So that is one d. That's five cold damage, and um, its speed is reduced by ten feet until the start of my next turn. I mean, I think its speed is reduced because it ran into the tentacle, mate. That's that's how that's <laughs> I'm taking that. Good, um, <laughs> right? Yeah, one of them is is held in the tentacle. It's not a grapple, but. Artificial. Um, Evie, when does when does um... directly after my turn? Should have gone already then. What do you want Icarus to do if he goes directly after you? Um, fire wildly into the oncoming demons and. Can you please make me an attack roll at disadvantage? 
Yep. And adds plus two. Cool. Baby. Okay. Okay. 19? I wrote a 19 and a 17. <laughs> Go, Icarus! <laughs> Icarus is going to try and hold the gun in, in, in his hand. Because that's how you hold a gun. And in doing so, falls over. Oh. And as falling over, does a little barrel roll forward, and while rolling, just... Just a shot out towards the oncoming horde as it does a little little barrel roll forward. Uh, this is another laser rifle. Can you make me... Can you roll me 3d8, please? Oh, Icarus! Yeah, I can. There is a little behind you. <laughs> That's fourteen. Fourteen points. <laughs> one gets grabbed. The one of the one of the demons at the front gets grabbed, and the devil next to it, he has wings and can fly, and is speeding forward. Suddenly, just shoots back with a laser striking it in the shoulder and chest as it lands down awkwardly. Yeah, grand, absolutely fine. Good. Um, right. Uh, you can see, uh, if you're looking a bit more closely now, there are eight of them running towards you with various things on them. One is currently being held in the tentacle, and one is currently um, on the floor because it got shot by a laser rifle, which it didn't like. Good. Uh, Anton, it is now your turn. A little hand with a head just did a little little gunshot, and it was quite, quite good. Careful, he's armed. Right. No, I'm done. That's not. <laughs> Good night, everyone. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> wow. Um, I'd, I'd like to do do what do what I planned. I would like to try to copy Nezarel's elven magic and harmonize with him and see if I can. Them. Them. Sorry. Thank you. Actually, I just had a thought. Nate, can you roll me a d10, please? Ah, uh, la magique effect. <laughs> la magique effect. Seven. Aha! Another one. Uh, can you roll me a d4, please? Over the other side. One. Oh. Oh, dear. Mm -hmm. Um, right. As you pass through with the, um... With the, with the levitating Nezaril, and as you made the tentacle go into the ground, both magical effects. Um, there's a strange wind picking up down here, and bits of dust and detritus on the floor are being picked up and swirled around. And as they do, you suddenly realize bits of like shards of metal are being picked up by these winds, and suddenly there are, it's, a, it's called a flay wind. Isn't that nice? Um, there is a flaying wind that... Uh, oh, flensing grit. That's the one the word used. That's great. I like these are great words. Um, is now howling around this chamber as well. Um, right. Uh, Anton, let's start your turn. You take 1d4 uh, slashing damage from the flensing grit. It's a um, classic. <laughs> How much damage? Such a good word. 1d4. I'll roll it. Hang on. Do do do. D4... Two. You want to tap into high Sweet. elven magic and try and help Nezril. Well, are they through? Everyone's through. Well, then I'd just like to try to tap into the magic and help everyone else. Sweet. Uh, roll me a d100. Oh. Let's hope it be a d20. Well, there will be. There'll be an arcana check as well. This is to see what happens when you just try and do it. 30? Uh, roll me an arcana check. That's a 19 plus 10, 29. Cool. You sit down and try and tap into elven, high elven magic and you realize that you have no idea what you're doing. Your arcana check basically tells you, I want to help, I want to help. I don't know where you start. The humming. <laughs> you try and hum, but it doesn't interact with magic and the world, because it's just humming. Wouldn't that 20 help? <laughs> Wouldn't that 20 help? 
I mean, the D100 was to see if you could even begin to tap into this as a novice and with the 30s and no chance. And would the nat 20 help, Chris? <laughs> the nat 20 would let you really know that you have no idea what you're doing. <laughs> Is that too harsh? <laughs> There'll be more tans for this, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> you just hear of your shoulder. Is now really the time? <clears throat> I will turn and I will just mass suggestion them all. Hang on, do, do you think that... I'm not going to make a take your action. That's too cruel. It's not going to happen. Um, okay, turn around and mass suggestion. Why not? There's eight of there's eight of them. Uh, How many people can mass suggestion affect? Uh, it's a range and area of 64, I believe. But how many creatures? Oh, up to 12. So oh, fine. yeah, you can get all eight of them. That's fine. Um, Anton's just going to turn and with, like, magical confidence that, like, booms out his voice. He just says... I suggest you start to serve us like we are your lords and masters. What do I need to roll? Uh, intelligence? Wisdom saving throw, I believe. Wisdom. Okay. Uh, and you need to beat an 18. Oh, is that right? Yes, an 18. <laughs> eight rolls and seven of them stop just stop in their tracks one is still running forward and goes ah! do they ah! do, do they ah! Chris it's up to you mate you can do what you want with your point because I think they roll a three <laughs> they also stop in their tracks sorry all eight of the devils and demons at his accommodation are just oh wait they have magical resistance hang on I might not waste this three then that's fine that's fine no it's a zero mod so the chance of rolling the right one is is, is not high oh sorry then I will use the three oh wait do I have to yeah I have to yeah because it was it was it's advantage uh, so yes, um, they um, they all stop, and there's eerie silence. Um, talk to me about suggestion and taking damage, because they're all going to take some slashing damage. From Only them. if we hurt them, and if you. So hurt them. if we hurt them. So I'll just say to everyone: situation is now under control. Please do not attack or hurt any of our new guard. <sighs> You will note that they all stand still and don't react to, for example, a mid metal just tearing across part of their face. Don't react at all. All right, let's get out of this cube. Uh, right. Uh, Anton, D10. Uh, six. I explode in a fiery ball of energy. D100. <laughs> 36. I explode into 36 balls of energy. Um, nothing happens. Right. <laughs> uh huh. Can't wait for that to bite me in the ass. Uh, nothing happens, and the um the the wind will die down as well. Um, the moment the Nezril is through, and still, like probably some momentum's going. Oh, dear, just floating around the room. Um, they will concentrate and try and break. Break the connection. Out of curiosity, yes. whilst they are still holding it open, can anything Ava will pick up a stone and try and throw it through? It passes through. I thought you said nothing could get out. Not unless someone's doing something like this, and they will 
stop humming and the rent, the tear, will reform. You can see it reforming in the ceiling as well. Just reality will reconnect itself at that point. Can you do that from this side? uh, They have collapsed and see it appear to be somewhat insensate. (sighs) Old. Are we out of condition? Oh, the demons and devils are just standing to attention, waiting for an order. Uh, can, can I, doesn't Nezaril look like uh, any kind of healing spell would work, or do they just need uh, Romney a medicine check. Uh, hmm. Oh, uh, not nat 20. Three. They have three levels of exhaustion. I rolled bad. Holy moly. Uh, what, 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 do, what do I have that helps with that? Do I? I don't have. Uh, I think greater, greater restoration rest- cures a level of um, exhaustion. Yeah, I don't have that equipped today. Uh, so as I passed over that was, one as well. <laughs> uh, Nate was about to drop concentration on the levitate uh, as as uh, Nizero went to um, kind of. Uh, collapsed basically and so Nate now is like flicking through his spell book and is um, ritual casting on that. That uh, let's say tensor's floating disc yeah. so it'll just be yeah mm-hmm. so they can be easily transported is what you're saying yes how long does my suggestion last, though? 24 what? hours. No, you're kidding me. No. <sighs> okay. And you know what one of the orders will be? What? I'm going to do this again. And when I do, <laughs> I want you to feel. <laughs> okay. Um, you are in this space as described. You are inside. The shield is now back, and it's still. Sp- and now, as we'll stop concentrating, the the, the rent has gone. It's still sparking occasionally, as before. Um, this space is is clearly fiendish, and a lot of the design and aesthetic is awful. But um, these fiends are all standing to attention and just watching you. They're mostly watching Anton. Um, some of them have started to sort of slouch a little because you said. Treat us like we're your masters and superiors, right? Well, some of them have started to slouch a little. Most of the demons and are just like looking a bit bored, but um, they are standing to attention. Can I poke a face? God, poke a face? <laughs> I think it's a demon that's turned to you and be like. <laughs> uh, they will look towards Anton with fear, and then they will go back to standing to attention. Um, Icarus will bound up next to you, still somehow holding this this laser rifle, and will just go... You tell him, Icarus. <laughs> it's okay, but I made a friend. <laughs> Very literally, yes, you did. That's <laughs> lovely. Um, have you introduced <laughs> him to Felipe? I haven't. <gasps> Icarus, this is Philippe, and I just, this is my whole little thing. Now don't shoot Felipe, Icarus, you hear? <laughs> How have I done this to myself? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Evie has very much done this to you. <laughs> Icarus will understand that um, shooting Felipe is a bad idea, while Felipe is looking at us with a kind of... <laughs> I feel like Felipe is just like, not again. The look on Felipe's face is one of pure disdain. So, um, I don't mean to interrupt this very lovely bonding moment, but uh, our guide and font of information, including information that we weren't given before we came in, apparently. I feel like they were less than accurate about whether they could get us back out again. Um, It is unconscious for the foreseeable future. Do we pick a direction and just go, or do we have to sit here and wait for them to feel better? Uh, Eldrathne is is still sort of 
leaning over Nezril, um, they've taken their hand and sort of given them a squeeze on the shoulder mm-hmm. and, and, and just sort of saying, you did it. You got us in. Um, <laughs> their eyes will do a flutter. Oh, God. That's good. Ah, do you know where we need to be going now? Yes, the castle. Right. Do you remember which way it was from here? We need to get out of the tunnels, correct? Well, the tunnels lead to the castle, at least some of them do, so... Ah. Good. I mean, they lead all over the city, really. Um, any signs? Um... Well, it's a good job we have eight guides, and Anton will point to the demons and devils behind him. As we all slowly start to pick themselves up. Um, Lots of support. <laughs> Pathetic, really. Well done. Pathetic, the demons helps not you. Um, <laughs> hmm. Well, um, oh, hang on a moment. We'll try and stand. Think a second of it. This, this is marvellous. Um, who did this? Oh, yeah, that's, well, you were... I thought you might like to just like have a sit down while for a bit. How do I move it? Um, I'll drive how do I move it? <laughs> this is going to become like a, a Yoda floating <laughs> chair. It's baby Yoda. It's a baby okay. Yoda chair. Staff and just kind of rose along in the air. You could punt down the tunnel. Punt. <laughs> it follows you, doesn't it, Jay? Um. So it follows 10 feet behind you at all times? Yes. Yeah. 20 feet. Grant, um, could you take me over to that wall, please, if you'd be so kind? Uh, oh, yeah. And so I walk over to the wall, and, like, it only counts, so I have to do a bit of a, like, wander around. So I it's, will like, allow that you can move it. It's not important. Um, they will get up to a wall, and they will start... find it much funnier than it is to do that. <laughs> do like sort of video game in a circle walking to make it go where you want it to it's go. It's like Snake, where you've got it's, to pull it around. It's the crystal ball, but on a much bigger scale. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, it's, um... What, what was she called? The the American president's daughter from Resident Evil 4. What was she called? Uh-oh. Ashley. Uh-oh. Ashley. Okay, um, you <laughs> got kidnapped all the time. Um, y- you move Nezaril towards the wall, and they'll start trying to clear away some of the, like, demonic wall hangings. Like, there's things in the way that they're trying to be something on the wall. Do you help them? Yes. Uh, as you start to pull away, you start to see that a lot of the uh, architecture down here, a lot of the design, similar to the tunnels you pass through, is very modernist. There's a lot of uh, metal and um, what looks like um, iron railings and things like that, there is a strange-looking sign written in Elvish on the wall. Do you speak Elvish, Nate? No. And I don't think... No. I could do it. I comprehend languages, but only as a ritual right now. Is anyone else coming over to look at it? I I would have followed. I would have been staying next to the the floating disc. Then, um, Elvrathne, you will see that this is marked down as a castle and with an arrow but it's all stylized. This is, form has been given a lot more credence here than function. It's a cursive font. Yeah, it's it's not legible at all. Like it's a cursive font and it's the, the arrow's built in. The arrow's not like really good at pointing out where it needs to go. This is a conceptual sign. Not a good sign. <laughs> Picture it, picturing one of like the like Instagram style live, laugh, mm. love fonts that you can barely read. Kinda. That's actually not a bad analogy. I was imagining a metal poster, but you know, yeah, all, all, all yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> you go, What's the band called? I don't know, but there's four amounts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but there is a sign pointing down the tunnel to the right of you. So, heading off. Uh, this feels very convenient, but it literally says castle, pointing this way. Well, the uh, tunnel we came down was designed to take. Lissick back to the castle to help protect it when the time came. Right. I mean, it's all right. superstition and that sort of thing, but it is handy. Very good then. Do, do you think we, we're we fine leaving a small demon battalion here then? Or should I, we bring them with us? It's really not my choice. I didn't um, dominate their minds. Could I have been chatting with them? 
Your demon contingent, your devil and your fiendish contingent. Yeah. Sure. So, how many of you are in the city? Um, why, why, why do you want to know? Because I'm your master and I will destroy you otherwise. All right, all right, fine, fine. Touchy. Um, there's, there's, you know, the whole, the whole contingents, all the devils and some of the demons that survived. Uh, 200, 250? And why are you working together? Well, Frack told us we had to. Frack? Yeah, an issue, I suppose, but Vrak's really in charge. And Vrak is a demon or a devil? Well, sort of both. What? He's a, um, what's it called? Does it, like, tries to turn hands inside up. Rack, rack, racky, tiger, rakshasa. Oh. Uh, okay. Rakshasa, as you would know, I think it's fair to say that you would know this, uh, sit outside the hierarchy of heaven and hell. They, um are connected in a different way to fiend. They are a fiend, but they are neither devil nor demon. Um, what are you doing here? Well, we were on reconnaissance, innit? No, I mean, in the sea. What are you after? Well, we, we want to get out, but it's not happening, so we're just getting as much as we can. You know, taking things off Nez, taking things off the surgeon when we can, taking things off the gift when we can. Making some deals if we can, you know, staying out of the bail no one's way. So how many different parties are there? There's GIF, there is... No, not GIF, GIF. It's an easy mistake to make. What's a GIF? It's a hippo. You've never heard of GIF. They would have no reason to have heard of GIF. <laughs> What's a GIF? It's a hippo. <laughs> yeah, it's like a hippo. They make all of these, point to the various guns, grenades, armor. Okay. And what were the other parties? Well, there's Nez, but Nez very much keeps to themselves. Who's Nez? Well, it's a dragon. What kind of dragon? I don't know, yellow. What? You mean gold? No, yellow. Definitely more yellow than gold. I turn to a devil. Is it yellow or is it gold? <laughs> I no, assume it's... this is a demon. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's definitely like... It's weird, right? It's yellow and light seems to pass through it at times. A gem dragon. Whatever that is, yeah, maybe. A topaz gem dragon. Don't know what that is, but it's yellow. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. It's really old as well. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else? Well, yeah, there's the uh, there's a surgeon, but we don't tend to go near him. A surgeon? Oh, the boulder. Yeah, it was out, it, outside. We sometimes sometimes get a message out or in, but it's a, it's a crapshoot. Lost a lot of people. So right, that surgeon's no good anyway. Don't worry about it. All right. It occasionally sure. like, brings us stuff. Occasionally it gets through. We use it to, to you know, get, get, all the, get all the weapons and stuff and give food in response, you know. All right, what's in the castle? So no, we don't go there. People who go there don't come back. And that's all you know? I think it's probably the Bale Norns. Bale you, Norn? You would know that a Bale Norn is an elven lich, but it is a good lich. It is a lich that decides to live on and um, help support an area, a place, a family, a person, that sort of thing. And it stands against you. I mean, we don't get involved. We don't really go there. They don't have anything to do with us. Excellent. And where's the Mythalar? The what? Where's the big city that crashed into the Elven City? Well, it crashed into the castle, didn't it? All oh, right. Thank you. Now, you're, you're going to... This look of like, why are you thanking me? <laughs> now, you're going to follow us and protect us, and then maybe after a bit of a sit-down, I'm going to ask you to do something else, and you are going to accept that. Sound good? Whatever you say, boss. Very good. Buddy. Are we ready? <laughs> so I just shout to everybody else. Are we ready to go? I think I figured out the way forward. Everyone's yes, just... it's that way. <laughs> um, Nate, again, 
taken by with his little machine, um, and uh, which is now a cartographer's map case um, since my last long rest. Nice. Uh, so I am going to make. Uh, oh, what? How, what's my inspiration dice? So you can re-roll a d20. Sorry? You can re-roll a d20. It's advantage. Oh, right. Okay, cool. Uh, let's, 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 let's. Uh, so that is a 19. Um, so, yeah. Uh, hang on. Wait. Sorry. Wisdom. So <laughs> it's 22. Um I don't know Which, what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, sorry. It's all right. <laughs> Cartographer's map case. Oh. Uh, I I have to make a DC 15 wisdom uh, perception check. Mm. Um, so actually, it's 25. Fuck's sake. That's, that's, that's 15, 19, and then... Uh, uh, and then uh, so it's a 24 so I've hit 24 on the wisdom on the perception check uh, success revealing a map buried in my map case noting a relevant shortcut but uh, travel time is reduced by half while you follow that route if you succeed at the check by more than five which you did the map includes notes on the terrain granting advantage on the next ability check to travel through the mapped area in the next hour that's brilliant um, let's make this <laughs> You don't. You don't suddenly have like notes. No, no. no. <laughs> um, it so be, I think it, he's, he's gonna, it can magically work yeah, yeah. stuff out. Yeah, it's it's doing this thing, um, and he kind of twists a bit of things and goes, uh, "Wait, I, I'm just going to do a thing. It'll be a. It might shine in your face today, but uh, it's fine. Don't worry." Uh, and it's like a little kind of line of light goes up from the screen and then does like a, a sweep of the area and so oh. it's like a scan. Like an alien, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, um, and yeah, the various things, uh, like a Fallout map, kind of like little bits start popping up on on the little. That's great, absolutely. Um, yeah, I'll give you stuff on that as we as we progress forward. Remind me that you know more. Cool. And yeah, I will say to everyone. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so apparently it's it's kind of this way. I think if we go off the sort of that way, then it might be a bit quicker. I'm well, not you- sure these signs on the wall are all that great, actually. Um, what you will see on your scan, what you will start to see, is that broken bits of crashing city have meant some of these tunnels become impassable, so there'll be workarounds to get around them, but yes. Um, are you all going to move forward? Are you not going to move forward? What's happening? Before we head off, yes. can, can, can I have a moment with Icarus? I mean, always, yeah. Excellent. I, I kind of sit Icarus down and just kind of get eye level. Icarus can't doesn't... sit down. Icarus doesn't have an ass. Yeah. I'm I'm going to let you go in a moment, okay? But I don't want you to be scared, all right? When we die, our bodies go into the earth and nourish it. And we will always be together because I tap into that power that you will give the earth. It's a wonderful gift. Is that okay? Okay, I'll see you soon, my darling. And I give him a bop and he just kind of dies. Anyone want a gun? (laughs) And there's a perfect time to go to break. (laughs) Anyone like a gun? Good, okay. Uh, See you in 510, everyone. (laughs) God, he's in bye. We are delighted to be sponsored by HeroForge. HeroForge offers fully customizable tabletop minis with dozens of fantasy species and thousands of parts to choose from. You can see all of the minis that we designed for this stream in the overlay, and they animate when we enter the combat, so look out for that.
Hero Forge are fantastic, so do check out the Pro Membership where you can get premium access to features ahead of time and beta access to things um, and all sorts of cool stuff that just makes your life a lot easier. And you can check them out at heroforge.com. We are delighted to be sponsored by Ultra Pro. They make accessories for D&D, Magic the Gathering, and more. My favorite part of their collection are their figurines of adorable power. Here is their gazer. Uh, they also make other things such as deck boxes uh, if you play Magic the Gathering. You can find all of Ultra Pro stuff at ultrapro.com. We are proud to be sponsored by Alchemy RPG. Reimagine your gaming experience with Alchemy. They're focused on creating immersive cinematic experiences everywhere you interact with tabletop role-playing games. You can be playing a game, creating a world, streaming, watching live games, discovering new content, look at all the cool stuff that they are doing there. You can use environmental motion art, scene-based music, seamless character management to run your games over the internet with upcoming features including homebrew content, streaming overlays and spectator mode. So go and check out alchemyrpg.com. Hey friends, check out our new sponsor, Phoenix Dice, for a carefully created menagerie of click-clack math rocks for your delectation. Check out their entire selection at phoenixdice.com, and just so you know, Phoenix Dice are all about living gloriously in the worlds of tabletop games and sustainably in this one, which means their dice are working to be recycled, their packaging is recycled, the dice are made of sustainable materials, it's all great stuff, you should definitely get involved. You can also join us today in chat with a chance to be in a raffle and win some Phoenix Dice of your own. Just put exclamation mark dice into chat and you'll be in with a chance to win. We're delighted to be supported by Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms, a Dungeons and Dragons strategy video game that brings together D&D characters from novels, adventures, and multiple live streams into a single grand adventure. Select your heroes and formation and battle through waves of monsters for free on PC, phone, PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo Switch. You can pop exclamation code into chat for a free Electrum chest. are also supported by Warriors of Waterdeep. Take your team of warriors on a quest spanning the Forgotten Realms, all on your mobile. Power up your teams with items, work with your guild to defeat hordes of enemies, and test your metal in the arena. And to make all of that work, you need gems! As we frequently say, the hunt for gems is real. Pop exclamation mark wow gems into chat for a link to collect free gems and get yourself that nice sword you've been looking at or revive your heroes against a deadly foe. Download link exclamation mark warriors of Waterdeep in chat.
We're delighted to be supported by Neverwinter. In Neverwinter, explore and defend one of the most beautiful cities from Dungeons and Dragons' Forgotten Realms campaign setting as it rises from the ashes of destruction. Epic stories, action combat, and classic role-playing await those heroes courageous enough to enter the fantastic world of Neverwinter. Neverwinter is completely free to play, so set yourself up an account today and pop exclamation mark NW gift into chat for a link to a free gift. Check out our supporters at D&D Beyond, your guide to digital dirt and dirt. Make character sheets online, share them in a campaign, and track all of those tasty little stats in one easy place. You can use the Beyond app to track your characters on the go. You can also use their encounter tracker and archive monsters to run any smooth combat thing. You know what I'm saying. You're a DM. You've done this before. You know D&D Beyond is the place to go. You can also check out our character sheets and the exclamation point characters in Twitch chat below. Check out our wonderful supporters, Elderwood Academy, who make beautiful bespoke gaming themed gear, including hex chest dice boxes, spellbook deck boxes disguised as bespoke ancient arcane tomes, and scroll and codex dice tower and rolling tray pairings. Make your own with their online designer at elderwoodacademy.com. And welcome back, everyone. So our party have finally entered Mithranor, and it is a hellhole. But they are about to start traveling through it and see what they encounter. So there are five of you and eight fiends that you have got on side, moving down these tunnels, heading in the direction of the castle, as far as you know what that direction is. Is there a marching order? How is this happening? What are people doing? I think... Wood, wood sorry, oh. sorry. Sorry, Before we left, would have pointed to the the I can't remember which one it was. The corpse of the bandoliers. Um, That's a demon. Thank you. And uh, as we were about to move out, just pointed to probably Nate because I've I've seen Nate fiddling with the the new tech more. Um, did we want to take some of those baubles with us? They, they might be effective. Oh, oh yeah, maybe actually that's a good idea. I actually have a really good idea for them. Okay, I can I can cast catapult. That's all good. <laughs> 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 Do 
do you want to split them up or do you want to have some how do you want to do this what are they are they all the same they all appear to be the same right they're all great there's there's two straps we can literally take a strap each yeah okay if no one else wants to take any ownership of them then um uh, nate and anton you both have five grenades I was, I was going to say, anyone, anyone want one of these? I mean, I'm pretty good at that. <laughs> the Chaos Goblin Nate strikes is, again. <laughs> Nate is about to throw it and then just goes, and then like steps and hands it. <laughs> they are all pretty simple conceptually. Um, they have a, um, it's not a firing pin. And a, this, this is not a modern grenade. They are basically designed with a, um, button it looks like some kind of flip switch on them that once you arm it and throw it it will explode if you just throw it around there's a chance it will explode but it's not very high um you can add fragmentation grenade from dnd beyond they exist on there and they function exactly as they do um just a quick mechanics what thing. you've done <laughs> yeah. gee do you gee do you have featherfall yes sweet well i'll unprepare that <laughs> What now? There's no, there's no rest happening. This is not a rest. I point. I touch my orb, and for a minute, I can change my uh, <laughs> my spells. Now is not the time. <laughs> <I've done. laughs> but it's magical. Stop fiddling with that thing. <laughs> the the fiends. How many times? <laughs> you have an army to control. <laughs> Focus. <laughs> But it's magical. <laughs> okay. They so Ephemera has five frag grenades. Great. Um, Anton, Nate, which of you keeps the other five? Or do you split them up? I believe Nate gave away. Oh, I'm just I had a grenade. Oh, right. I'm sorry, Ephemera. You have, Ephemera, you have one fragmentation grenade and... Um... <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what the belt's for. So... Make with the belt. All right. Give, <laughs> give her another one. That's the girl. So Ephemera has the belt and it has all five on. Um, and no, no, no. Gives another grenade. So Nate has three. Holds out the hand again. <laughs> <laughs> Get stuffed. These are, these are mine. Oh, no. Look it. Look it. I. Uh, Ava, did you want any? You can sort of throw your own, which seems fine, but did you want any of these toys? I would like Ephemera to have her fair share. Mm -hmm. Very good. I'm fine. My hammer does it better. So why don't you split the ten between the three? Anton's gone. Ephemera <laughs> <laughs> with the army. Anton left. He wasn't doing my hammer. He was like, oh, looks at Anton marching away, looks at the orb. Not now. <laughs> now? Now, uh, Ephemera, I will also point out you are currently holding a laser rifle that no oh, one yeah. has taken off you. I guess no one wants this. Uh, I guess I'll carry it around till someone does. Oh, Petunia, <laughs> you look hungry. Whoop. Okay, Petunia now has a laser rifle. Luckily, Petunia's a bag, so can't do much with it. Petunia is a sloppy eater. Like, there's <laughs> drool going. <laughs> While as Petunia, they scarf it down. While Petunia is open, um, Femme, do you want to swap over? You've been carrying um, it for a while. Yes. Yes, that sounds like a good idea. It, uh, it, does, it has been a bit chatty today. Mm, you were looking a little um, distracted. Um, Petunia, are you going to bite me? <laughs> Come on, we've is talked there about way this. Is there a way to tame a bag of holding? Like no. specific tickles to, to make it be nice? Roll an animal handling check. Okay. <laughs> I was in that 20. As you, you oh, scritch. Plus five. I've never seen from Evie. As you scritch a little bit, Petunia does. <laughs> and we'll look at Ava with a kind of. <laughs> and then <laughs> open, open her mouth wide. <laughs> You withdraw the one of August, that's fine. Um, I will flip open my wrist pocket and yes. um, pop the one of August in there. I imagine this is something we've done multiple times over the last few weeks of just swapping it back and forward every few days. Yeah. Just to be clear, wrist pocket is a spell, just for the audience. Uh, so uh, it oh, does. Is it? 
it's a spell, <laughs> and it, the um, one does vanish inside it, a bit like a like a, I was going to say a magician's sleeve, but um, anyway, you um, Anton's already marched on ahead. I'm assuming all the fiends marched on with Anton, so none of them were able to see this exchange. Unless Anton gave a specific order for them to follow him, then none. Did you give a specific order for them to follow you? Yes. Why not? <laughs> they have all followed. Let's, let's stop that <laughs> right now. <laughs> they have all followed and none of them noticed. That is fine. Anton's a good sort of 100 feet ahead at this point. Are you all following? Round. Yep. Right, Anton, you, you went first. Um, as you start walking down this tunnel, it's very similar to the tunnels that were outside, as described. There is more, like, graffiti. It's not graffiti. It's um, demons and devils having fun. Like this, They clearly have control over these tunnels as much as possible, and there are bits and pieces all over the place. Um, are you going stealthily? Are you asking your army to go stealthily? <laughs> Uh, I would turn and ask them, is there anything of danger or no, like any more of your comrades in these tunnels? Uh, one of the demons will just, <coughs> and a devil will um, look at them, then look at you. Uh, with, with the greatest of respect, um, everything in here is trying to kill each other. Yeah, it's fucking Sh- dangerous. Really? So no more of your comrades then? You stupid fuck. Yeah, tons of them. Then where the fuck are they? Well, they're currently busy. They're currently, um, they were going to do another chat with them, um, with the, the gift people. The gift people? Where? Points to the other tunnel. Oh, wait. Right. So there are people in this tunnel that are friends, not just dangerous things. Look, you're going to work. And he, like, he like, clicks and runs their face. You're going to work, all right? Work smart. No. But I don't work for them anymore, I work for you, so we're not allies anymore. Listen to me, right? (laughs) Do I have to kill you? No. Right. Do you have a brain? Yeah. Inside there? And he knocks on the skull? Yeah. Right, well, let's work. Now, any of your comrades that are part of the Devil and Demon Army of 200 of you, in the vicinity, is just that tunnel anymore coming on towards the castle? Because that's where we're headed. I mean, you say army, it's more like a loose confederacy of peoples. All right, that was very intelligent for you. <laughs> sure. Not, it's not like, mate, I don't know what you think we are, but we just run around the tunnels and do whatever the fuck we please. Anything comes in here is ours. Okay, so sure. if we bump into any of your former comrades, you're going to pretend that we are your prisoners. You're going to take us to the castle to experiment and see what happens when you take people there. Sound right. good? Yeah. That's all you're going to see. Okay. And if they try to do anything different, then we'll kill them all. Right. Cool. Now, keep marching forward and leading us to the castle. I'm just going to go talk to the rest of my, uh, well, your generals. And then I'll slowly slink back as they walk ahead. They will all start marching forward down the tunnels, sure. And I turn to everyone else and I'm like, right, okay, so fuck me. I, I, I just, there's like, they're like everywhere and they're fucking dangerous everywhere, man. I just, uh, I've, I've told them to, to, to lead us to the castle because uh, cause like that'll be where the Bailmore is and a Bailmore is basically like an elven lich that's, that's quite nice. So, so hopefully if we go there, it'll be able to help us also as conveniently where, where the Mithalar is. When you speak to them, you don't stutter. I, uh, it's because I'm, I'm pretending to be someone else. Okay. Nazarella's still sat on the um, floating disc. Just, just feel like Ant- Anton will just look at Nate when he says that. <laughs> uh, what's, what's your insight? Anton's insight? My insight? No, I think it's all right, actually. It's a skill you're proficient in, but you're not very wise, so... I'm not proficient in insight. I have an 11. Yeah. I'm proficient in perception. Oh, that, that, okay. Yeah. 
Mine's a 19 and I'm scrutinizing both of them. Anton's got very low deception. <laughs> <laughs> what is what what are you hiding? What's what's the beef? Nothing. Uh, I think know, Anton's been very clear. <laughs> uh Nate just does a like a nod and a raise of the eyebrows, which I think and uh, Anton would miss, but Eldrathi would pick up on. Well, it's just as well that that's a that's pretend to be somebody else because that guy's a dick. I mean, I thought he was very commanding, but okay. Um, up ahead, where Anton just sent the demon army, devil army, fiend army, fiendish army. You start the fiend hear, friends. You start to hear shouts and screaming and the clash of weaponry. Oh, what's cool? Seems like there might be a might be a trouble. Do you all rush on ahead? Do we think it's a fight we actually want to get into? Or are you sending your little battalion into their death? Well, let's try not to. I'd like to keep them for as long as we can. All right then. <clears throat> okay. Uh, are you all moving ahead at pace? Or are you being stealthy? Well, they're already fighting, so I guess I'll move at pace. I'll keep up with Anton. Yeah. Nate would try and be stealthy. <laughs> okay. Because because he's literally toying uh, Nezril, I think. Hmm. Roll me a stealth check. I was going to say with disadvantage because you're towing around an old person, but I think just a flat one's fine with me. <laughs> uh, that is uh, twenty six. Cool. You can stay back and not be part of this if you want to be, but the others will just charge on ahead. Um, as you charge on ahead, the tunnel ahead of you, there are. It is. It's old, and damaged, and in some places there are plants growing through and cracking that like you can see where tree roots and um, vines have broken and twisted the metal in places like this is overgrown but to a point where it can nature will find a way um, as you run forward up ahead <laughs> life finds this is, a way this um, is very funny it's me. <laughs> as you travel up ahead the shouting gets louder and uh, the four of you who are charging ahead Nate Stealthing means you are a bit slower, but you are behind and able to catch up and see what's going on. Uh, the four of you who are charging ahead will see that um, the demons and devils that Anton has currently suggested are in a pitch battle with about ten elves. They appear to be dressed in quite old-fashioned elven armor, not ancient, but um, about ten, fifteen years old. I think you'd be able to work out that these are elves. Um, they are, um, the elves are mostly fighting with bows and swords. Um, it's a lot of like tunnel combat kind of stuff with short swords and uh, short bows being used for bracing shots and that sort of thing. Um, as you move forward, it looks like these two groups are fairly evenly pitched. Um, I'll shout to the demons, everybody disengage and move back! Uh, roll me a charisma check. But I'm the master in law. <laughs> Yeah, if you think that demons would listen to their master and lord necessarily when it comes to eating tasty elves, you are mistaken. So the delves will be all right. It's just the demons we're worrying about. All right. Roll me a... Um, what do you want? I think it... Well, this is the thing. It's demons, right? So you, you how do you want to um, tell them to stop? Any charisma-based check is fine by me. Oh, they're all minus one. Sorry, we'll just go for a simple persuasion. Okay. I, can I guidance that? I don't know if there's much point. <laughs> <laughs> so I rolled a five for a four. <laughs> Anton, as you shout this out, as you try and convince them to stop, some of them listen and will back up a bit, but most of them will just keep fighting. Um, do we want to enter initiative? Do you want to enter the fray and do something, or do you want to just watch this happen? One of you guys might be better than this, I, I and was, they will listen to you. I probably would, after seeing that failed, would probably run into the center and be like, enough, they're with us. Hold your fire. Shouting to the elves. Do you speak in elven? Yes. Great. You run into the center of this fight. You can see, you can part. <laughs> So many attack rolls from here. You run in and shout, there with us, hold your fire. Can you make me a persuasion check, please? <laughs> shout. Could I shout, uh, we have the demons under a mass suggestion spell uh, in Elvish. Sure. To give advantage. Sure. 
Uh, thank you very much for that. That is a 22. As you run in and shout this, um, some of the elves will look at you confused and not quite sure what the fuck is going on. Um, they're going to, like, stand back. If demons start attacking them again, which some of them will, they're going to go right back to fighting them because the demons are not convinced at all. But the elves look a bit confused. And you hear from, you hear one of them just shouting. It's quite dark, so there's a lot of, like, patches of light coming through from the ceiling. But honestly, it's a, it's a bit of a, like, shadows moving in the dark. It's quite confusing. Uh, you'll hear an elven voice shout back to you, Eldra. Um... Well, if you're in charge of them, get them to stop for fuck's sake. She turns around and if any of the demons and devils look like they're going to be doing anything, Anton specifically said, we are mm-hmm. your masters, right? Not just he. Correct. And um, she she will turn and just say, stand down. Sounds like an intimidation roll to me. <laughs> yeah, you tell him. Which is inspiration. <laughs> You're no longer him. Thanks. <laughs> it worked on me. Yeah. Is <laughs> your inspiration, what, a D8? Uh, I think it's just a D6. It's a D6. It's you a are six. not high level in Bard at all. No. Actually, no, it's, not, it's not about inspiration. No, no, this is just a help action, right? No, I was meaning inspiration because oh, I don't use it. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. I'm just trying to use as many things as possible. Must some take point. every character sheet box. Uh, oh, I mean, okay, just about scraped, uh, what, well, <laughs> that, that scraped to 19. Okay. I will roll for the demons. Do you feel cowed? Yes, you do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> moo! <laughs> <laughs> um, the ones who are still fighting will ah, fucking, will sort of back off and away. Um, it's mostly been, you've seen, they've pulled out, um, there wasn't enough time to use the guns and they're not very useful at short range. So they mostly pulled out like scimitars and uh, or using their own claws, like the, the, and some of them will back off. There's not many of them left. How many are left? <laughs> Two. There are two demons left. Uh, the other six have all been killed. But what about the devils? Demons and devils. Fiendish army. Still. Yeah, but the devils would be naturally a bit more lawful. I thought that was the reasoning. No, they, they all wanted to kill elves. They, they all <laughs> very much wanted to eat. Some of them did. There are a couple of dead elves as well. A poop. Um, the elves will sort of back up and they, they will... <laughs> They start to move out of this like shadowy combat stance, and um, you can start to see a bit better because most of you have dark vision as well. Um, there are eight of these elves standing, looking at all of you very confusedly. One of them will step to the fore, and um, they take their. They're all wearing like helmeted armor. They take the helmet off, and long, flowing blonde hair flows down the back. Sorry about that. Looking at Anton, I thought we had them under control. Well, to be fair, the demons and devils, and they're not necessarily the most well-behaved. I mean, this, so you know, these are warring factions. We, we, did we also didn't realise that you would be sorry. does not mean to cut off Nile, but Eldrathni is going to cut no, off. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yeah, um, we we also did not appreciate that uh, other threats would be so close. Who are you? Where have you come from? Has Nezaril caught up with Nate yet? Nezaril is, is, is sat uh, Nezaril is just so watching I'm, this. I think, sort of over at the back, Nate has gone over to Nezaril and be like, do you know, do you know anything about this law? Do you recognize any of the, like, armor or anything? I mean, that's, that's, um, it's called, it's called Mantherian armor. Presumably they're remnants who were here when the, um, city crashed, I don't know. So, uh, should we go over and talk to them then, or, like... I don't see why not. Okay. Uh, so I think Nate is fed up of the disc trailing, like, 20 feet behind him. So he walks behind it and just, like, pushes... <laughs> and grabs the edge of the disc and sort of... Yeah, that's fine. Um, you will move the disc forward, a bit like a wheelchair, and move them forward into the situation where everyone is, um... Ildra, what do you say in response to um, this elf? They look like... They look quite surprised. Like, there's a certain amount of... Um, 
who the someone who's been stuck on a desert island for a very long time kind of vibe. Uh, you're probably better off speaking to our companion as Nazril approaches. We're explorers, I suppose, of sorts. Hmm. Nate, you have a very high passive insight, don't you? Uh, not very high. 18? It's quite high. My, mine's 19. That's my, 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 Ooh. 19. Oh, I'm sorry. The party of insightful fucks will get this. Um, Mine's 11. <laughs> on, my right passive on. investigation is really high. Okay. Um, the three of you will then see. Um, Nezril, seeing these elves and seeing them up close, will tense up slightly and will then... Oh, collapse slightly back. I mean, Niall loves that. <laughs> Anton would be like, oh my gosh, what's going on? <laughs> Ava just rolls her eyes. <laughs> Dude, what's, your, um, what's your passive insight? Or would you do that 19. anyway? Oh, it's a 19 as well. God, yeah. <laughs> That's really Anton going, oh, oh no! <laughs> hey, he's not that. He probably, like, tried to help them stay set up. Um, they're, they're sort of muttering slightly and just, like... Oh, so much to go. Ilder, if you're there, we'll sort of lean to Please do the talking for me. Oh, uh... D- did Anton literally just nod in agreement? <laughs> Was that just style? <laughs> <laughs> uh. Go on. Go on. Somebody wants to talk over somebody else so much they can do all the explaining. <laughs> um, the two dev- Ava Sorry. will look at Eldra struggling and go, um, fighting more your style than talking? Do you need a someone who can actually talk to people? I, I can talk to... Th- oh, then th- be my guest if you don't want the help. We're trying to make our way to the castle. Where did you come from? Is there a way out? And behind them, like some of the, some of the elves are like taking helmets off, and all look like they all look like they have lived in this armor for I don't know ten years. They look shell shocked. They look exhausted. They the look on their face is very much like has someone just arrived to save us? Oh no! <laughs> uh, there's a hole in the wall. Keep going down that. No, not anymore. That's, it's still there. Um, it's closing very slowly, though you might want to hurry if you want to make it out. Um, but oh, oh, all right, th- th- thank you, thank you so much. Um, and they will all. Just no, stop. no, 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 no. It's closed. It's closed. No, um, no, it's stay. You didn't see. You ran on ahead. Believe me. Trust me. It's still open. You have a chance of getting out. Uh, roll deception check. Ava. But I saw it close. Oh, oh I'm lying. Forces. I am yeah, I know. <laughs> Please, this is what these roles are made for. Um, that is 29. Cool. Both of you roll me insight checks to start. I'm not going to just say that Ava can say something you know factually to be inaccurate is accurate and you go, fine, there's got I to mean, be I mean, I'm lying to the elves and I'm hoping that Ildra and Anton are fun enough to go along with it. I'm not actively trying to deceive them if they choose well, they to deceive them. their own fault. <laughs> I love the idea of you just quietly going, be cool! <laughs> well, the inside check. Yeah, I... Like, there's no way I could beat that, yeah. I can't beat it. Both of you... I rolled a nat 20, though, which meets it. Amazing. But also a 29. That's like the only way I could meet it by. Never mind. Niall, Anton has a moment of maybe it did. It's possible. I don't know. I f- reckon Ava's trying to get rid of these people, but I don't want to say categorically that it is or it isn't. Like there's, you, you get what you get is indecision. It's up to you what you do with that. Ildra, Ava is lying to get rid of these people. It's up to you what you do, you've seen through it. I mean, it's also worth saying, given that she meets, that's not Ava's motivation. Oh, what is your motivation? I'm sorry. Um, She felt as powerless as she's felt in years. She wants to get some power back by fucking with these people. Fuck me. Nice. Okay. That's, <laughs> um, that is not true. That... Sorry. 
as soon as uh, Nezril kind of reacted to them, um, I would, uh, Nate would have, using his meta magic adept feat, subtle spell cast detect thoughts. Um, on Nezaril. Well, it's just everyone. It's everyone. Well, Detect Thoughts is on me. So I do like a little surface scan of everyone around. Would you have it's done very that? Very clever. That's would so you, clever. Would you have done that if it weren't for this whole exchange? Because you haven't rolled an insight yes, check on my, the deception. My plan, that's why I didn't roll an insight check on the deception, because okay. I had already planned as soon as Nezaril, because I want to know why he's reacting that way. That was the point they of the detect sorry why they're, that way. why they're reacting that way that was the point of the detect thoughts in the first place i understand can you roll me an arcana check please that 20 for uh 27 <laughs> in which case you catch all of this <laughs> what you also catch in nezaril's head oh no hang on that spell they've got. Ah. Yeah, Intellect Fortress. No, 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 no. Um, uh, fucking... Button Lake. I don't know. It blocks a lot of divination stuff and it blocks a lot of reading people's minds. Let me just check and see. Sorry. Didn't have it up. Load, <laughs> motherfucker. There we go. <laughs> Give me the spell I ask for. Give me the spell. No, not the cantrip. It's the other end of the spectrum. <laughs> ah, yes. That cantrip that stops everyone from reading my mind. <laughs> no, it's not that spell. That doesn't do that. It's, um... Okay. You tap into their minds, and they don't know that you're doing this. You haven't, like, gone, ooh... They do. No, it's, if you oh, just no, detect the surface thoughts. Never mind. Yeah. What you, get, <laughs> what you get from their mind. Oh, dear. Oh, boy. Okay. Their mind is running about six seconds into the future. <gasps> Sandy. Oh, that's a fucking sick spell. <laughs> They have the ability to get a sense of how things are going to happen before they happen. It's magical, obviously. Um, they are calculating against what they think might happen, what they see could happen, and looking at all of these various possibilities at any given time, and are trying to work the way through it so that they can get what they want. Where they have occasionally played up being a bit doddering, and a bit old and not quite with it. It is all a facade. This is a calculating, this is a calculating mind to an extent that's almost frightening and to an extent where you go, this may not be entirely mortal. They also, as you're looking into their mind, it suddenly clouds over and they are, and you see visions from thousands of lives led, different actions, activities, moments, and then back into the calculating mode, almost with a, a sense of frustration and anger. And that goes back and forth about every yeah five ten seconds. Um, there is an incredibly intelligent, terrifyingly intelligent creature here, desperately trying to hold on to that and their mind is wandering in ways that they cannot control, and it is... The frustration and anger is... The resentment of it is bubbling so near the surface. Like, it's... You have tapped into a very different creature from the one that you met in many, many ways. Um, they don't want to talk to these elves because they think they recognize the leader, the person in charge. They recognize them as they moved over, and they worry that if they are recognized that may not be the right thing at this point in time they're not sure they want to reveal themselves to the people who are in here 
Also, Ava is is lying because Ava wants to exert some control over a situation. Uh, Ildred knows and is about to do something about it, and Anton doesn't. And Ephemera is listening, I'm guessing. (laughs) Ephemera is getting bored. (laughs) Um, Cool. Given all of that, knowing that Ildred is about to do something about it, Nate will go... Yeah, I was the last one through. I'm pretty sure it's still open. And we'll uh, oh, look shit. over at Ildrathne. And with, I guess, maybe a performance check for that side of it for just go with it. Yeah, I'll take it. Why not? I did not see that coming. Neither did I. I'm loving this. <laughs> <laughs> That's an at 20 on the deception. Oh my god! 26. How many? So many! He said that <laughs> luck had gone. The deception, <laughs> the deception was to the elves, not to yeah. Ildrathne. Right? And then the performance to Ildrathne. No, like that is another an at 20. That feels like a cheat. <laughs> what? <laughs> We can't see your dice. If you rolled two nine 20s, you did. That's yes, all we that's, have. That's what it's doing. Fine. Uh, yeah. So the performance becomes a 26. Ildred, you understand that Nate is going along with Ava's plan. And you also yeah. understand that... I mean, what's your intention here? Do you want these elves to go away because something else is going on? Do, do you, Can you give us a bit about why you're going along with Ava's plan? Uh, I'm going along with it because... Nezero wants to not be recognized by these people, potentially. That's a lot to get in something that is unverbal and unspoken. Nate has reasons and they are not malicious. I think that is the fairest I can yeah, get. Yeah, you. yeah. It's very much a, just please trust me, I know what I'm doing. Um, does Nate maybe like, uh, as he's sort of doing this big spiel, like maybe like obscuring Nezaril slightly from the rest of the elves or something. And yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, like, he's probably he like, because he was behind the desk pushing it, he's probably like stepped round and maybe even shoved the desk. In fact, he's probably shoved Nezaril on the desk behind Ildrathne. So it'd be like, uh, like clear the way, be like, yeah, yeah, go and, go and have a look. It's just down there. In, in which case, Ildrathne's like uh, about to... Um, respond to Ava uh, so it ends up that's not that is uh, yes it's not good oh. <laughs> but, oh that's not God. a lie what <laughs> oh he'll draft me oh. <laughs> that physically hurt to watch <laughs> <laughs> Um, the, elves will, the elves will look at you all and um, the blonde one, the one in charge, they will they will look at all of you and just nod and go, thank you, thank you so much. Um, we we need to leave if we can, so we're going to go, but... Um, hey, good luck, I hope it hasn't closed while we're still, still here talking. Right, um, they will all start to run. You've got to hurry, the, this the, is your chance to escape the, and get home. But the bail law, uh, we could... Uh, what? Uh, 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 the surviving demon or the surviving devil and go, do you have any idea what just happened there? Nah, nah, man. <laughs> no idea what's going on. I just go up beside and like, I don't know either, but let's just keep going. I guess so. Why did we just get rid of the people that could have helped us? Yes, why? Sorry, I uh, I just like, I got the feeling that maybe Nezril wasn't, uh, that things weren't, I don't know, like, you know, that little, they seemed to, to react a bit when we got closer to this, that lot, so. Is there a I just got a vibe. So. Is there a safer place up ahead? Do we think that we can have this conversation? And sort of brushes past Ava, and don't you nod along as if you're, this was your plan all along. I noticed Nazaril also look uncomfortable. Of course. <laughs> well, that's true, she did. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so is is the portal open? <laughs> no, it's... no, no, no. So we just sent these these people to their death. Quite possibly. I mean, they were just killing all these demons and devils, and they've been in here for well a long time, by the looks of it. So they can probably take okay care of themselves. 
We've probably just sent them to a dead end. No, dead that, end, portal will, that portal will bisect them like it did everything else. Only if they try to go through it. If they've got a modicum of sense about them, they'll stop when they get there, realise well, we it's too late to turn back. Yes, but I didn't tell them that it looked closed. I gave them a bit of a chance. Stop smiling. It's disgusting. And he'll turn around and keep walking. <laughs> are you looking for somewhere to have a quick sit down, talk it through, or are you just going to plow on? Uh, Nate will look at his map again, and I get, a, what was it? I got a something, an advantage, I think, on a check in yeah. the area. If it- um yeah, advantage on the next ability check. So I guess, is that a survival? I'm looking for somewhere that looks safe that yeah, we can... Yeah. survival. Uh, that's a 16. Um, up ahead, where these elves were in the tunnel with when they encountered your fiendish um, cohort, um, there are holes in the ceiling and many points of... Um, access that could be used um outside of here you are in the map 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 <laughs> you are currently underneath a bit the old city um there are a number of buildings up there that appear to be um what i would describe as barricadable Like, there's one that you've got, that hole there, there's one on the far side of that that you can probably get inside. It doesn't know there's anything in there. The scan shows it's relatively untouched. Uh, so, yeah, I think there's a bit up, up around here where we can, like, block it off and be, I mean, probably safe for as long as we need to for now. Do we need to stop? We haven't been no, I don't, for long. I don't think we need to stop for long, but I would like to not have this discussion in the middle of a corridor where anyone could be listening or sneak up on us. What discussion? Well, what the plan is. I'm assuming that there is one that the rest of us have not been party to, considering we literally just met a group of people, a group of my people from this city that has been closed off to the world, who actually live here and may be able to help us and know something about it, and we've just sent them away. I mean, I thought the plan was we get to the castle without dying, and let's be honest, Eldrethny, they're not quite your people anymore, are they? <laughs> Let's correct, uh, just send them away as well whilst we're correcting things. Because we didn't just send them away, we sent them to their deaths. We only send them I, to their deaths. I think, that, I think that's a bit of an exaggeration, Anton. Like, No, let's not exaggerate. Let's play exactly how it happened. You told them that there was a portal open. They are not sure what it looks like. At least one of them will walk into that shield and at least okay, grievously harm themselves. We did it. Singular. This is None of us walked find into it. We saw all the bodies around there. We have not been trapped for years and then been given hope of escape. There's a noise creak from down the corridor. <clears throat> Nezreel, that better be you, otherwise I'm going to fireball it. Um, I'm, I'm, no. I turn to the corridor, what the fuck is down there? <laughs> you know? I put my goggles on, is there something down there? No. I kick the door down, <laughs> what the fuck is this thing? <laughs> I divine sense, is there anything down there? Within 60 feet, no. Oh, for fuck's sake. It's an old city. You two, I point, at, I point at the fiends, you two, go check out what that is. Reconnaissance, go find out, come back. Sorry, Evie. Sorry, um, how far how far is the tunnel that the elves just went down? Uh, you've not been travelling that far. Okay. Um, to 300 feet. Hmm. Hmm. Is it close? Is it far enough that Wonder Walker's things would come into effect if I were to just scamper off for a moment? I've not been too punitive on this, and I don't intend to be. Um, if you scamper away and make sure you come back relatively soon, you'll start to get, I don't know, a dicky tummy, but it won't have in-game like serious effects on you for a while. A dicky okay, tummy. That's fine. Well, everyone's talking morality. Pass about trace on me, and I'm just going to scamper off after them. Can you make a stealth check because Ava keeps an eye on you at all times? Yes, of course. Uh, would that be before or after the pass about trace? Uh, after. After. Yeah, I'm not. After. Okay probably go, oh, she's vanished, and then see if I can find you. Yeah. 
Okay, so I rolled an eight, <clears throat> so that makes it a um, 19. So my passive is a 19. Uh, you see, while this discussion is happening, that Ephemera is scampering off back down the tunnel towards where the um, shield bisected the wall. Fem, where are you going? Uh, you just hear in your head, I'll be back in a moment. Don't worry. Oh, no. Um, Does not wait for a response. I'm going to fast uh-huh. step, fast step and get in front of her. You do? You appear in front of Femera as far as moving away. If you want to go and deal with a whole lot of unknown enemy combatants, don't go on your own. I was only going to go and make sure they didn't die. Oh, well, that's not fun either. No, everyone seems so upset about it. I figured if I could just say, hey, oh no, we were wrong. It's closed. Don't go through that. Then just come back. It would be fine. Listen, either they are all intelligent enough to not stick their hands or their heads in the obviously death trap magic portal, or they aren't. And in that case, if it takes one of them to die for the others to turn their brains on and turn some survival instincts on while they're stuck in here, then we're doing them a favour. But I wouldn't be doing... I'm not doing it for them. I'm just doing it so that we can move forward and get the power to kill those bastards. We We can move forward all we like. Nothing's stopping us. For someone so charismatic, how do I know about diplomacy a little bit more? There's a scream from the corridor ahead of you, sort of demonic scream. Oh, sweet. Well, that's definitely them dying. <laughs> <laughs> I suggest we start moving to uh, the castle. Seems like everything here is going to kill us. I don't know about our other two, but we best get them moving. Nezaril, that sound good to you? Fine by me. All right, let's move. How far have Eva and Ephemera gone down the tunnel? Fast step's not massive. 60, 60 feet? feet? Yeah. 60 feet. They're still visible um, with dark vision. Yeah. Um, I will just quickly message um, up the tunnel. Uh, we're making a move. Are you you two coming? Shall we? They've Look, they've, they've worked it out. We've given them a healthy survival instinct to carry on surviving down here. We've helped. Shall we? We're not done with this. As I turn around and march. Nazaril answered, sorry, if you want to finish that off, Rebecca, please do. No, no, no. Yeah, Ava will, um, un, like, frustratingly, unhurriedly wander back up towards you all. Everyone's moving, so you're wandering slightly behind them, but yeah. I'll gently catch up, but not looking like I'm catching up. <laughs> sure. Whereas Ephemera is just looking over her shoulder occasionally just and then slowing down if need be. Just to keep an eye on because mad, but still still loves. <laughs> Has Nezaril answered my question from earlier? Honestly, no, I can't remember what your question from yeah, earlier. No, was. no, it's fine. <laughs> ask it, ask it <laughs> why we sent them away. Because I I clocked that Nate was covering for Nezaril. And Nezaril has not answered that question. Ildrathni is, whilst Ava and Ephemera have gone off, Ildrathni has sort of been waiting for an answer. Oh, hang on. Was there a, was, was that, okay. If you ask that before, as they left and there would be a conversation, then Ezra will go, um, I don't know how people here will react, who anyone in here is. I thought I recognized the um, captain, but I don't know. I'm exhausted and I'm not at my best. Did you not expect anyone here to be our allies? No, I didn't. I expected everyone here to be those that have survived will have survived by being the most brutal, the most harsh and the most morally accepting of behaviours needed to survive in a closed environment. I expect them all to be awful. 
Sounds like you're a pessimist. And I think maybe that was when the scream happened. <laughs> <laughs> was that scream specifically from the direction of the elves or the other direction? The direction of the demons. The, the, <laughs> I, the fiend, the fiend friends. Fiend friends. Fiend friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anton and the Fiend friends is a sick man now. <laughs> the Fiends. I... I have a purpose here. We have a purpose here. I don't want to get distracted from it. With politics. Assuming that it was going to be a distraction, I was assuming they might have been able to help us. I didn't ask them to go run back towards a, a way out. Very well. Ultra. What do you think your fiend friends... What? You're right. I shouldn't have been so cautious, and Anton, you're right as well. I shouldn't have been a pessimist. There's always a chance people will do the right thing. Should we turn back? Speak to these elves, see if they can help us. And well, I, like, I did I'd not like... mean for my act for my worry to cause any kind of hurt or harm. I'd like to think they're intelligent enough to see that the portal is closed and not try to go through it. I certainly hope so. They're not that far away. If we think that they're going to be inhospitable now that we've sent them on a fool's errand then we ought to get moving the other direction if we think that they genuinely might help us then i would like to speak to them but unfortunately i agree with your first statement i feel like sending someone to destroy all their hopes and dreams is probably going to make them not like us so let's go what did your fiend friends discover no clue <laughs> I think they're dead. <laughs> Good. Can I keep using this, Nate? It's it's it, it, that did take it out of me quite. Uh, yeah. How long has it been since I first created it? At this point. Wow. Uh, yeah. I'll have to like I have to like reset it every hour, which takes ten minutes. All right. So I can do that now, and so it does I will allow happen. because we're using it as mobility aid. I will allow that it doesn't take up any of your spell slots, and that you will be using it by like, using ten minutes to cast it while it is still active to recast it to make it work. Because I mean, it's, it is just a ritual that I'm casting from my spell book. It's not oh. using a slot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Then in which case, yes, you can. You can absolutely. Um, do you need to move forward towards the castle? <laughs> <laughs> To the castle. You move down the corridor. Um, up ahead, a large part of the corridor is blocked. I would say a good seven eighths of it. That's very specific. Yeah. Um, How many feet is that? <laughs> fuck it. Um, it's about oh, it's 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 a it's a very small gap. You'd have to squeeze through it. Um, a piece of the city, a piece of the crashing city. It's the first time you've seen this. Uh, Nile Anton, you recognise it in Nile Anton, Nate Anton. You recognise it immediately. It has the same architectural style as a crash nethery city, and this piece of it is sticking into the wall at a very peculiar angle. Um, it looks like a piece of like road or pavement that's just bisected on an angle down into this. There is a hole in the ceiling that you could pass through if you wanted to, um, or you could try and squeeze past the rubble here. There's no sign of your fields. If we go into the city, uh, we'll probably come up against some netherese things, but probably we'll be able to find the castle because the castle is in, well, the city is in the castle. So if we make our way through the city, we'll make it to the castle. Or we can go through and uh, just try to find the castle. I, I asked you all to come here because of your expertise. I will follow your advice. We know another east cities, don't we, Nate? And he is a bit sharp with your name. <laughs> Ooh. Spice. Yeah, we do. Let's go then. 
do you climb up the rubble? Yeah, I think so. I, I miss I missed which part of the plan Anton said was the best one. <laughs> <laughs> we know the city. We know we know another east cities. We've we've literally explored the hell out of one. So we're probably quite adept with recognizing traps and stuff. Um, you all climb up. I'm not going to make athletic checks rolls out of it. It is a, it's a good like 20, 30 feet up. It is a, a bit of an exhausting climb, or for those who can fly, it's no issue at all. Um, and you are able to pull yourselves out of the ground. As you climb out, around you are... Tall buildings, taller buildings than most of you will have seen before. They seem to go four or five stories high, some even taller, and they're not separate buildings, they are contiguous, which all of us in the modern world recognize completely, but uh, for your time period, is fucking weird. Um, iron, metal reinforces these buildings. There are um, balconies, large balconies, larger than you would have seen or, or be able to know what to do with, really. Um, a lot of the metal is uh, rusted or uh, it's coppery. If it's copper, it's gone very green in places as well. Um, there are bridges spanning between different parts of different buildings to others. Um, lots and lots of greens and oranges and reds, uh, symbols in elven hanging off them in different places. It is deserted, and it has clearly suffered heavy damage. This piece of city you've just climbed out of has also gone through a building that has collapsed in on itself on a far side. Um, there are hooped arches and circular windows all round and all over as you look through this space. And as you do, you also note how green it is. There are small gardens or parks or areas where greenery clearly flourished and thrived and places where trees were built into the wall in certain places and were part of the landscape and the construction of this city. They have now become extremely overgrown and they are growing through places where they clearly weren't supposed to grow through. And alongside all of this are pieces of blackened obsidian-like stone that are either jutting out of various bits and looking up a the side of this crash city dominates the skyline completely larger than you can almost envisage a humongous dagger into the heart of this space it's a lot to take in in one go welcome to Mithranor you're right. I think Nick. This is the point from the poster where Nick takes the selfie. No wonder I look so. Oh, I heard about that. Well, everybody, get in, get in, quick. Ah, see, the poster is a bit of a city that's slightly different, but I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be a dick about it. Yeah, you do. Fine, great, love it. It suits everyone else looking slightly angry in the background. Yeah. Yeah. The fuck. Oh boy, that was excellent. Thank you, everyone. Ah, uh, just a quick check in. Everyone doing okay? Yeah, well. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, what will happen next? What will happen next? So many questions, so much to work out. But that's for next time when we hit halfway point, the end of next episode. Isn't that exciting? So, yes, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all so much for playing. You are all marvelous. And thank you for going so deep into the roleplay. It's very much appreciated. Uh, yes, we play on Mondays. We're playing on uh, Mondays for the, for the next while. <laughs> so join us on Mondays for more adventures in Mithril. Um And on Tuesdays, we're currently doing one shots. We have a lot of fun one shots from some DMs you may not be expecting. Ooh. But yes, we hope you enjoyed those. <laughs> I, think I think they're expecting us by now. I think yeah, we've said a lot. Not talked about it. <laughs> by don't now. don't yeah. hype it too much. It'll be... Honestly, I'm not as much as you like, don't I? <laughs> honestly, I've lost track of weeks, so I don't know if they've just happened or are about to happen. But yeah, there'll, there'll be some really lovely one shots happening in the next couple of weeks. So check them out on Tuesdays. And on Fridays, we have either Talking as a Free Action, where our uh, elusive question masters take um, our player characters through horrible challenge rooms, basically. And also Talking <laughs> as a Free Action, they can also ask questions, have an interview. Uh, or we'll be doing a talk together, normally as a post show Q&A for our shows as they run. 
Anywho, that's where we're up to at the moment. Um, Roll Together RPG on Twitch, on YouTube, and on all podcasts, so you can find different versions of the shows there, depending on what you're looking for. Uh, we also are on all the social medias. Join us there. Massive thank you to all of our sponsors and supporters, the D20 Club, for helping us make all of these lovely shows. You are marvellous. You are amazing. And finally, that's it, I think. Am I done? I'm done. I'm done. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Bye-bye now. Bye. <laughs>